Hey YouTube, as you can see, I am back with Dan from Dan's Fish, and we're gonna be doing another complete tour of every fish, every aquarium, and I guarantee there's gonna be fish that you've never seen. There's brand new strains. It's gonna be wild, it's gonna be long, so make some popcorn, sit back and relax, because we're going on a three hour tour. So we're gonna start here. We'll just go down through sequentially. So um, we have some fish that are run of the mill and people will be like, yeah, I've seen cherry barbs. But then we have other fish that we're probably the only people in the United States that, that have them. You'll see a mix. One tank might be super common. The next tank might be something you've never even heard of before. So let's get started. These are hobbyist bread and raised cockatoides, uh, triple reds that saw the camera and went straight under the plate. They're, they're actually, they were sold to us as quadruple reds and, and they are, but uh, some of them don't have as much red in the ventral fins as we would want to call them that. So we call them triple reds. So I, I guess really high quality triple reds. Here are some albino red and white guppies. We only have a few left. Something I've been working on a lot is live bears. It's been so frustrating to me how low quality live bearers are, how unhealthy they've been. And so I've been working for a couple of years to try to crack that code. And as of a few months ago, working with a certified aquatic veterinarian and trying different suppliers and testing a lot of fish, we have finally found a supplier that has fairly clean fish. We, we still have to clean them up a bit, but they don't have any of the viruses that are so prevalent among live bearers. And the viruses you can't treat, so that's a problem. Um, they have a couple parasites and things, but we know how to treat that. So we finally, we think, figured out live bearers. So this is one that we're getting from that supplier that's coming in and, and doing well for us. This is a hodgepodge tank. If you yeah, look at the like we got a lot of stuff number going on. of stickies here, <laughs> this is the tank where, like, when there's just a couple species left in a tank and we just need somewhere to put them. Just some mono shrimp in here, like big beasts of mono shrimp, but these, these are Philichthys tico, extremely rare live bear. Um, I don't know if anyone else has these. And these are some fry that we raised up and just have a, a couple go and trying to get a drop from them. This is a rainbow fish that I bet most people have never seen before. There is one guy on here with a, a damaged tail. Um, sorry, dude, I don't know what happened to him. Just saw that today. But look at these fish, they're, uh, they're unlike any other rainbow I think you would see. They're almost like a pork chop rasbora in a way. They've got kind of that dark pork chop. And then when they're displaying and things, that goes away and they lighten into this. And uh, they have been flashing their breeding stripe today. Just an interesting one. What else has we got in the back there? And then we have some red shoulder severums. Now, this is a saga, so they were sold to us as red, red shoulders but they didn't have red shoulders, and I don't trust the severum kids <laughs> until they develop. So we've been sitting on these for a few months waiting for them to develop. As you can see, they finally are developing the red shoulders, so we can finally list them for sale. I, I learned the hard way. I bought some red shoulder severums from a supplier a while ago, and the same thing happens with geophagus. I also bought uh, geophagus veni from a, from a supplier a while ago. We sold them to customers, and then like a year later, eight months later, customers got a hold of me. They're like, dude, you sold me red shoulders. Uh-uh, and they sent me a picture of the adults. And I was like, you're right, but I didn't know because when I got them, you know, they were little. So Severums and Geophagus, it's really hard because until they're, when they're small, you really can't tell what they are. So you're just trusting what the supplier labels them as. So we've learned to wait and wait till they color up and then, and then sell them. Um, here's a Cory in here that you'll probably like, being a Cory guy, Bob. These are CW62s. I do like them, and I actually own them. And I bought oh, them that's from right. you. That's right, I remember that now. <laughs> that's what's left of the group. A uh, nice, uh, really cool looking little Cory. And then also in here, we have a Sulawesi shrimp colony. Um, oh yeah, nice. These the Montana red orchids. Yeah, they're all over down there. Wow, those are cool. Yeah. I think these actually might be listed. I think the like there's a lot of them in there, and uh, I think we finally got enough that we've started listing these. Oh wow, yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, look on the wood there. Like as soon as you see them, then you know what to look for, yeah. right? 
But wow. yeah, this thing is just gonna be yep. full of them in there. Oh, those are neat. Yeah, really neat, wild. Th these are not a variant that was, you know, created in aquariums like a lot of your cherry shrimp and bee shrimp and things. That's the actual natural wild coloration of that fish. We have a bunch more fish coming next week, so there's several empty tanks. Um, but down here, these are Alexander Engelhart's steak handler strain. So he gave us some a couple years ago, we bought some from him, and they've just been constantly producing and producing. So uh, this is a fish we never tried to breed. <laughs> but the strain <laughs> That's usually is, how it goes with them. Yeah, the strain is nice though. It's coming out nice and consistent. Everyone's gonna think these are Bosmani, which of course you would, because they look just like Bosmani, but they're a, a Majorensis is what this is. So closely related to Bosmani, different species though. If you're a true bowhead and you're, you'll know what I'm talking about. But there are a lot of fish that, unless you look at the genetics or, or count fins or look at teeth or something, you're not gonna, you know, really know the difference. So it's a Bosmani for all intents and purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Licorice garamis. Uh, I believe the species is pronounced Dysneri. I'd, I'd have to look at it. But what I like about this is licorice garamis come from super acidic black water, right? So, and we have hard alkaline water. So you'd think there'd be problems transitioning, but if you treat the supply line correctly, if you treat them correctly when they land and make sure you get them from someone that's treated them well, no losses. Like, yep. I'm, I'm really happy about that. Ever, uh, just real quick for people that don't know, uh, you have the post-it notes here, and if there's losses, they'll write the how, what, like yeah. how many and what day. Yeah. Like so like there. this one, we lost one when they first came in, just one. Um, but that's how we keep track of our, our issues. We're probably not going to see these. Oh, they're down there under the plants. Really rare, really tiny live bear. That we're not that's a four spot live bear? Yeah, that's the uh, Flick These Quadro. I have been after those it's... forever. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, well, I've got some. <laughs> oh, yeah, the little guy, they're really small. That's, I think that's full grown males. Like, they're a very small species. And they're under the plants, so they're getting shaded. I'm not sure we'll, we'll see them, but. Well, oh, they get some good B roll, out. yeah. Oh, here you go. There's a couple coming out. Yeah, those are the four spot live bear. Well, wow, I haven't seen those in years. Yeah. I was able to get them once, <laughs> once. Dwarf chain loaches. Can never go wrong. Yeah, stay small, Snail active, assassins. peaceful, eat all the snails. Um, and this is why you need a large group of them. Just, I mean, they're expecting food, but still. Yeah. Seeing them school like that is pretty sweet. They clown around together. And usually these are one of the pricier of the more common loaches, but um, I got a, I brought in two tanks worth, so I was able to get a little bit of a break. So I think they're only $14.99, which for yeah, that that's a good price. is really good. We usually sell them for $24, which is, I hate to do, but it's what we usually have to do. So this is the Royal White Cloud, AKA Vietnamese White Cloud. Just like your typical White Cloud that we know and love, but a, but a different species. So it looks pretty much the same. Group's doing really well. We did lose one, but I do see another one down there struggling. Um, oh, yeah. And we don't, so we don't try to hide that. Like, we're not here pretending that we never lose fish. Um, our entire goal is to make the supply chain as humane as possible, try to work with suppliers that do as good a job as possible, and work with them to gradually improve and improve. And we've made a lot of improvement. Um, we have very few losses compared to what we used to have because we've made improvements and had our suppliers make improvements. But when we have problems, we're transparent about it and then we work to try to solve them. So, I, you know, we're gonna see some struggling fish and we're not gonna hide that. All right, Kelly Kyber, which is a Frederici type, I believe, of rainbow fish. Um, we have lots of really odd rainbow fish that probably only true bowheads are really gonna appreciate. This is one of them. Uh, and then a couple Colombian, you know, blue, red, and yep, a betta, <laughs> a betta, super black betta. Super. <laughs> okay, so check this guy out. Oh, okay. This is a cowboy whip tail, and I'm in Wyoming, so I had to get him. <laughs> um, 
they're really neat. Look at those big extensions on the tail. Yeah, really nice layer tail. And what I like about these is they're easy. They eat pellets. They, you know, they're just as easy as is most of your like a red lizard whip tail or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they've been hardy for us. And are those easy uh, to keep. hobbyist bred? No, these are not. These are okay. wild. Do you I know do if they have, have been bred in though? I don't know if that species has been. We there have a similis that ha that we got from a hobbyist that we'll show you later. You mean these similis right here? No, this is a different <laughs> similis. So this here is Corydoras oh, similis. Oh, just little guys. Yeah, little babies. The violet cory or smudge spot cory, named that because of that big black kind of smudge. Yeah, on the this is one I don't have. I need to get. It's that bedded back there is a bedded embellus. Um, <laughs> so. Got some whiptails, got some corridors, and got some bettas in here. Zebra auto sinkless. Yeah, so, these are cool. Uh, if you like autos but want something a little, little more interesting looking, I suppose these are a unique one. If they'll get on the glass, I want to show you the bellies. Like auto sinkless are something we're finally figuring out how to do right. We still have a little work to do, I think, but we've found the right supplier and. We we know how to like get them in and get them eating and all that. Um, so, yeah, I found that to be a problem with the uh, rarer strains of autos. Yeah. Yeah, just getting them to start eating. Yeah, the zebras can, are can the more rough. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. And awesome. then another tank of them down there. Oh, here's some bellies. So, hopefully those are showing up on camera, but. I'm proud of that. They come in, and no one's emaciated, everyone's just doing well. And they're already on pellets and things and like gigantic that. Gigantic snails. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's a rabbit snail of some kind, but we don't know what kind exactly. Here are some of my favorites Red Beck 40 pencil fish. Yeah, Nanostomus Beck 40. What do you like about them? I like that they're colorful and they're not as expensive as coral reds. Yeah. I mean, they're not as colorful, but still, I still think they look great and they're affordable to buy in large groups. Affordable, pretty, peaceful, don't get big. Yeah, I like them too. And it's always a fun alternative to, you know, tetras and rasboras. And when the males display and they get those bright iridescent white tips on the fins and they're circling and stuff, they are stunning. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so. there's some that have some dark reds in them already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love them. All right, so guppies. Uh, I don't think there was any guppies last time I was no. here. No. So, let me tell you the story of guppies. So I used to keep live bears and it was great. And then when I got, when I started this business, I tried a few. It was like horrible. Mm -hmm. So I tried a few more horrible. So I tried a few more horrible. So I was like, okay, nope. <laughs> so for a long time, I didn't have them. And what I was doing in the background quietly was just when I'd order from a supplier, just try a bag or whatever, just, just try one just to see. And I went through, I don't know how many suppliers, two years worth of suppliers and could not find one that had, I wasn't even worried about like quality. I was just looking for, will they live? Yeah. I was just trying to find health. Like that's it. And I couldn't find it. And then someone that um, I've known for a while and that, that I trust told me about a guppy supplier. He knows a, a breeder that he is dealing with. And I tried some of those and they did pretty good. A couple problems, but I worked with the vet and we figured out what they had and how to fix them. It's, it's, they have monogeans, which is just a common external parasite. Mm. It gets in the gills and on the skin. Prozzi treats it, it's easy. Nice. Um, but if you don't know that, you don't see it. It's not like ick where, where you'll see it. So now we know what they come in with. The strains are consistent, the quality's nice, and they come in with that one problem. We tested them, they, they're virus free, but they, they just have that parasite. So we bring them in, we just immediately treat them with, with Prozzi. And um, we also deworm, we treat with Levamisol. And usually that's all it takes and we're good to go. So this is a case where we had a real problem. These are chocolate garamis. And usually chocolate garamis come in and we know what we're doing. But if you see here, we've just been, it's been rough. So. These have been sent to the vet. Um, the problem is that the vet's out of town and by the time they do their workup and then send them to the lab and the lab does their workup, sometimes it's a two week turnaround for results. So in the meantime, we're just trying to figure them out. We finally did figure them out, more or less, but this is one that we really struggled with. 
So, and I'm not sure what happened. It's the same supplier that we've been getting them from in the past and they usually come in nice and healthy, but it's one of those mystery. All right, common autos. I, I like this right here. That's, yeah. I mean, that's what you need for autos. <laughs> yeah, don't clean it. <laughs> that's one way to make sure they thrive. Yeah. Always a favorite. Or, okay, here's the non-inexpensive pencil fish. So these are, I believe that these are the purples. Uh, we have those in the coral reds. Now that they're out of quarantine, I've got to look at them real closely, but that, that looks like a purple to me. They're pretty similar though. I get, yeah. I get mixed up, especially when they're fresh in the bag and like, I, I can't tell. <laughs> well, they're pretty regardless. Yeah. Okay, more guppies. These are the blue lace and cameras probably have a hard time picking up how intricate their pattern is. It's like your grandma's wedding dress. But this is another one we've, we're getting from a good supplier and they're a true, a real fancy guppy strain. They're consistent. So not only is the strain good, but they're healthy as well. So, and they're breeding for us, they're doing great. Yeah, nice big females. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, look at the dorsal fins on these females. I think they're interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Now this, I'm really happy about. This is yeah. another fish we've been figuring out. These are marbled hatchets. We had one loss is all, like the day they came in or the day after. The rest of the batch has been fantastic. And we've discovered a secret with hatchets. Now I would not have thought this, but hatchets come in with worms, um, like Camelinus redworm type things. I don't know if they are actually Camelinus, but that's what they look like. So we have to treat them with levamisole, and as long as we do that, then they do great from this supplier. Um, but I wouldn't have thought that because they're a surface dwelling fish and the way those worms reproduce is they lay eggs that drop to the bottom and when the fish is eating on the bottom they pick up the eggs and ingest them. So it's odd to me that hatchet fish have them but they do. So I wonder if the insects they eat in the wild maybe somehow transmit something. But they're doing awesome. Yeah, I was excited to see uh, hatchet fish on the website. Yeah, me too. Especially the marbles, I think those are cool. Those and the pygmies I really like. Just a whole bunch of cherry <laughs> shrimp. Yep. And then this is Hayotis saltsmani, this plant. This is a plant I've discovered I can't kill, which means I like it. And Looks kind of like bacopa. Yeah, a little bit. And it just grows and grows. We never did anything. It's still in its original pots and everything. And it grows enough that when we sell it, we just you know clip some stems and send them on. So we're not really plant people here, but that's when I, that didn't die on me, so yay. <laughs> okay, so here we have, we, I think we just sold out of the Onelli. Oh, there's a couple back there, maybe one pair left. Moanitania Onelli, pretty uncommon one. A couple babies in there. And then um, in the front here, these are what they call Cockatoides Mega Orange. I don't know why. Maybe when they get bigger, they'll be mega orange. But right now, they're kind of a little bit of orange. <laughs> so. so basically, just the orange flash. I, Maybe a little more orange. I have no clue. <laughs> I really don't know. I've never seen them big and full grown. Now, this tank looks cool. Yeah, super blue carry Tetris. They really are nice and blue. I always like when I see like a hundred fish in a tank. Yeah. Especially Tetris, yeah, yeah. right? And this is one that uh, is just like your normal carry Tetra, but uh, a lot of blue coloration. Yeah, it's not gonna, I don't know that it'll come out that well on camera, but yeah, they look great. One, one thing we did wrong is we put these in a top tank. If these were down here or here, um, the angle you look at them at, the blue's mm. a lot higher. When you're looking up at their bellies, it's just not as high. They kind of have orange on the top of their head too. A little bit of orange on top of the like head, orange on orange. the anal fin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a good looking fish. This was my very first goby I ever got. The neon blue goby. Yep. Now we have a couple tanks of these and they're not listed right now because we're trying to figure these out. We have a different tank that we're able to sell out of, but this is a problem tank for us. We have run these through every medicine that we have. We've sent these to the vet and we still have no answers. Hmm. I don't know what's going on, but they just, aren't gaining weight like they normally would. Normally, after a couple of weeks of having a group of fish with that body weight, we would have had them nice and fat and sassy, but 
they eat and they don't gain weight and we have no answers so wow you know that's that's part of the puzzle all right red mori trophius we have a few varieties of trophies these are getting big enough that they're finally getting a little bit of the red color they're going to get much nicer as they grow yeah these, these are, are really still nice little babies ones. for that size they look pretty good yeah they're looking pretty healthy mm -hmm. yeah and then these just came in so the tank's not scrubbed these are drake fin barbs i know you love them i think they're um, so underrated it's yeah. ridiculous yeah so they're in quarantine so i haven't you know got my hand in there to scrub the tank but the batch is perfect no losses so once they're out of quarantine here you know then we can get some good shots yeah those yeah, are nice so pretty now this is a fun one these are rosy loaches. These are one of the hovering loaches, so they kind of swim more mid-water than on the bottom. They'll, they'll rest on the bottom, but kind of like pygmy quarries are more a mid-water fish than most quarries. The, same with these loaches. They're little nano fish. They don't get more than about an inch. They're gregarious. They like to be in big groups. They're and fairly they're, easy to spawn. Oh, have you spawned my, them? So yeah. Oh, cool. I spa they spawn in a community tank. Now they were in a 125 gallon uh -huh. nano fish in a big tank. So there's various species of nano fish, but yeah, I got fry out of them just from feeding them just they regular. They just showed up for yep. you? Did, you? did you see them spawn? How did they do it? I never saw. Okay. And I actually, I didn't even know until I took the tank down. And when, you, when I started removing all the plants and stuff, that's Bunch when I saw. Bunch of babies. Yeah, it was crazy. They're fun though. They have all the antics of the loaches and they stay small. However, they won't eat snails. A lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, I've these are not these. snail eaters, I mean, yeah. as you can see. Believe yeah. it or not, not all loaches eat snails. <laughs> so this is a rare Westie. I do like Westerns. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the Cribensis from Matado. Just one it, pair? One pair left. We've sold the rest. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you can see the male down there. And the female's a smaller one. No, they might be making babies soon. I hope so. They've adjusted well. They're eating everything. They're flakes, pellets, whatever. They're they're great. So it's always yeah. nice when you get those rare fish to eat easy foods. Definitely. <laughs> so these are uh, your most common trophy species, probably. These are Duboisi, Duboisi. Um, this is the juvenile coloration, and it is like something out of a coral reef. They're just so pretty with those bright white spots. Now, as adults, that changes and they get that uh, saddle on them. So they're dark on the front half and the back half and they'll have a white or yellow or whatever colored saddle down white, the center right? of the body. Like a white stripe maybe? I, I think it know. depends on the location. Mm -hmm. um, I never claim to be a trophies expert, so I'm not quite sure about <laughs> that. But man, this well, is- Well, they're definitely healthy, yeah. Yeah, this is my favorite phase though. It's like the uh, panda loaches before they lose the panda color. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So these are wild Sulawesi shrimp as well. Are they the same ones? Because so we have different. two. We have two different kinds. So these oh, are wow, a different species. So we have the cardinals, which yeah. have the white glows. Um, now, have you had the cardinal spawn in here yet? Yeah, yeah. This is all these cardinals came from a few. See them on the wood there. Uh, let me turn that wood. Okay, and yeah, be I'll be getting that. some of these. I'll be bringing some of these <laughs> home. So there's two species. Uh, we were worried that they would hybridize because they came in the bag together, but it turns out they don't. Wow, uh, let me see if I can get you a nice shot here of all those cardinal shrimp. You see them? Wow. Those are so hard to find where, I'm, where I come from. <laughs> well, they were for us too. We started with, I don't know, a dozen and they've just been breeding in here. Wow. I love their little white. Yeah, they look, they look like a saltwater shrimp. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's hard to see in my lighting, but they also have just, just beautiful red all over with white dots. Yeah. Wow, there's so One many of, the of them, too. One of the prettiest freshwater shrimp out there. Without being man-made, that's just the natural, that's what they look like. Yeah, the other species in there came in as a contaminant in their bag. We have no idea what it is. Oh, well, yeah, like these ones here. Yes, yep. the ones without the white gloves. And we were really worried they'd hybridize, but Johnny did some research and looks like they won't. So I hope that's true. Um, so these are half moons. If you look at those males' tails, and actually the females' tails as well, you can see they're gesturing towards that kind of 
straight line, straight vertical line at the base of the tail, and then they kind of fan out more. So these are what they call the blue tail half moons. Uh, even though to me that looks black, but yeah, that's what they call. And there's a little blue on some of the females. Yeah, <laughs> a yeah. little blue sheen there too. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, um, these sure stand out. Yeah. So I won't even move the light down on these because they'll just <laughs> Not they'll, they'll glow too bright. But platinum mollies. Um, again, from that supplier that does a pretty good job. So um, I don't know that much about mollies. Um, but they have healthy mollies. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, they got nice so, color. And judging by the price that they charge me, I'm guessing they're decent quality. <laughs> <laughs> you would hope. So these are a different kind of algae eater. They're like a, supposed to be a really good algae eater like your Siamese algae eater, but these are the spot tailed. They have a dark tail, a dark spot right back at the base of the tail. Um, this is a group we've been struggling with though. It's only recently that we've stopped having losses, but I still don't trust them. I, they need a couple more weeks, I think, before I'll feel like maybe we could try shipping some out. Well, but, it's nice to find some uncommon algae eaters. Yeah, a different variety, right? And I think they're doing a good job. Look how clear the sand is and stuff, yeah. so. What are the little fry in here? Oh, um, I don't Just remember which something. rainbow fish that is. Oh, of yeah. course, it's a rainbow. <laughs> yeah, anytime we move rainbows out of a tank and put something else in there, fry up here, like. You need a, a, a <laughs> rainbow fish pond and just throw all the extras. It's, it's, they're oh, not these, hard to breed. These have good colors too. Yeah, though. look at these. This is a, a oh. hyphen platy, uh, the sunrise hyphen platy. And we have a lot of tanks of these because we ordered um, two species two varieties of show platies and they were out of one so they just sent, a, sent us a bunch of the other so we've got twice as much of these as I expected. <laughs> wow oh yeah the whole top row. Yeah but they're pretty like that's a nice tall Yeah fin. I would love some of these out in my tubs. You, tubs. Yeah they would glow for you. So this is a, a white cloud but the long fin variety. No Tiwa Creeks in here? Not anymore. Sold There's down. one left. Oh yeah, two, two left. left. Yeah. But this is, this is a bit of a mystery for us. This is a quote unquote true freshwater goby maybe. So we have the Xanthomelis, which I know is a true freshwater bumblebee goby. This is the ocelot. And the reason it's a bit of a mystery for me is because depending on what I'm reading, some people say they need brackish, some people say they're pure freshwater. I don't know. This is not one I ordered. This just came as a substitute surprise in the box. Um, I would not have ordered it if I didn't know for sure it was fresh water. But um, we've got them and they're doing good and they've been doing good for a while. So yep, well, I, but I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think a couple DOAs at the beginning and that's it. Um, so here's another guppy. This one we are having some trouble with. I'm not sure why but they're sure pretty, so I'm hoping I can clean them up enough to be able to reproduce them or sell them. Now I see a fish I'm really gonna like. Yeah. So, these are Panduro, Pistogramma Panduro, and they're doing awesome. Then this, this I'm excited wow. about. So yeah. check those out. So those are a pretty high quality red wag sword tail. They have the cauliflower high fins. They're doing fantastic for us. We've sold most of them. We're down to these last three. But those are females, and look how good they look. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, those are so pretty. I'm I, not really a sword tail person, but wow. Like, yeah, but every now and then. Yep. All right, so here is the uh, whip tail that has been bred and raised by a hobbyist. Oh, it's not similis. It's uh, Similmina. Back and here. there is one. Oh, wow. Yeah. The mottled whip tail. Oh, one right up front here. Oh, cool. Yeah. Go ahead. Just to get that out of there completely. Yeah, those are really nice colors on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Marbled whip tail. That's what it is, not mottled. Marbled whip tail. Awesome. Gertrude. Okay. Pseudomugo Gertrude. Aquarium strain. We've also got some specific strain ones we can look at, but uh, the 
the like Aru fours and things, they have a pretty high price point. So if you like Gertrude, but just want a pretty fish for your tank and aren't worried about location specific, then the aquarium strains are there we go. the way to go. Bembas. So these are the red band trophies in their juvenile coloration right now. But uh, fat and happy. Yes. Nice active of, fish. Yeah. There's just fry in here. Oh, just guppy fry. Yeah. Okay. We sold all the parents. Oh, more pistols. I got to come yep. down for these. So these are Borrelii. The regular Borrelii. Move this up because they're usually back there. We have these and we have the opals. Both are just as hardy and easy as the other. I think Borrelii are one of the easier apistos to spawn and keep. Um, and they come in several phases, but this is the normal phase, and then we'll show you the uh, opal colored phase uh, a couple rows down. Awesome. Okay, more fancy sword tails. These are the red eyed red hyphen cauliflowers, uh, those females there, and they dropped those babies, which have dark eyes, so I don't know who yeah. they got with. <laughs> definitely not albino. No, no. But the, um, other, the females definitely are. Yeah, the females are, and some of the babies were. It depended on who gave birth. So I think one of the females uh, bred with a non-albino. But if you look at the babies, I think I think they are a hyphen. Um, we'll have to see when they grow out a little more, but to me that looks definitely looks like, like it, it. yeah. it's going to be a nice hyphen. Some of them ride. look like it, and some of them like this one back here, maybe. Oh yeah, that looks normal. Yeah. You're right. On Not that much one. of a triangle on it. Yeah. This one too. So, yeah, I mean, we got a ways to go on them, but we'll see what that was. There is an African tetra in here that's super rare. It's going to be kind of hard to see. There's some um, quarries that are nice, and then there's some plecos. Let's see if I can show you these. African Tetras. There, there they are. Yeah. Like the African, uh, it's a Neolibius, I believe. There's a baby Carle that decided to show oh, up. Oh, nice. Yeah. We've got three or four of those in there. Some chocolate plecos. I haven't seen as many plecos as last year. Oh, they're on the back row. Oh, okay. Yeah, most of them are back there. Hang tight then, pleco nerds. Yeah, they're coming. <laughs> These are stunning. These are yellow cobra guppies. But look at them. Look at those females. Wow. Like the, f look at the dorsal fin on that female. Isn't that nuts? Well, that really stands out. They are so pretty. And the males are, you know, obviously stunning, but I can't believe how nice the females are. Yeah, those are great. All right, juvenile empire gudgeons, just barely starting to get a little color on a few of them. This is a fun one. These are the black Venezuelan quarries. So much cover though that there they go. Hard to get the light down there, but if I move those plants, we'll see them. Now. This is a perfectly healthy, awesome batch, right? They're doing great for us. But I had to stop shipping them because I, I shipped out like few batches and of those like three people had issues. Wow. And it wasn't in like one shipping day. So it's not like something happened to that one ship, like that one group of fish. It was separate sh shipping days. So they look perfect for me, they're thriving, but I've stopped shipping them just because I, I don't have a clue what's going on. So That's until bizarre. I can fix it. But I've got another tank of them that, that are shipping just fine. All right, so this is a group of platies that was sent. We didn't order these. They just uh, had some room in the box and wanted to fill them with a fish, so freebies. Interesting. Yeah, they look decent though. I mean, I wouldn't say they're show quality or high quality or anything, but they're pretty little platies. Mr. Bushy Nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mr. Bushy Nose in there. You know, I just went to, uh, I'm afraid to admit this, but we just went to Petco. Uh huh. Because I wanted to get some of these. I got some empty tubs that was getting mosquito larvae, so I needed to get something in there before they hatched. And yeah. Boy, those look, look way how, better. Look how nice those are. Yeah. So these I got from a, a breeder in Europe, and he has worked this line hard, and that's the result. Just absolutely glowing. 
Um, kind of pricey. I think they're like 20 bucks a pair or something, which for Rosie Barbs is crazy. But if you were here in person, you'd understand why. Yeah, that's, that's far better than anything you see in a fish store. That is a lot of years of work to get them to that point. All right. Blue ivory guppies, and there's coolie loaches in there somewhere. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But I like these. I think these. Yeah, these are. These they just look are, nice. Yeah. You can just tell they're a little step. They're, they're cut above, right? They're, they're more sophisticated <laughs> and more consistent. Um, okay, so here's a mystery. So I ordered Corydoras LSA, I ordered Corydoras species Peru. And I ordered Corydoras something else that I'll show you. And they all came in, they didn't label the bags, and they all look exactly the same to me. Reynolds Eye, that's the other one. So I don't know what these are, and uh, we're trying to figure them out. We're also I could, like this one kind of looks like a Reynolds Eye. Yeah, it might be. And, but Who knows? We're, we're also having losses, so just in general, this has been a Not good. chore. <laughs> but. It's a funny business, man. I always say you order what you order and you get what you get. Peacock Here's a Gudgeon. Fan favorite. Yeah. I mean, it's. What can you say? I mean, look at them. <laughs> can never go wrong with this fish. Beautiful. Just really unique. Mostly peaceful. I've never had really aggress aggression with these yeah. guys. I mean, males will spar and stuff, but. Nothing not, dangerous. Yeah, and they're not going to, like, bother any other species. Random panda guppies. Like. She's probably a year and a half old. Um, we brought these over from the house. We've had these forever. So this is kind of their retirement tank. But then we have these uh, red lizard whip tails. Um, and the thing about these is you just have to be a little patient. They, they're brown when they're young, kind of a brown mottled color when they're young. And then with time, they'll uh, turn that bright red color that everyone wants. You can kind of see it starting to come in on these guys, yeah. but it, they're more and more red every day, but it's gonna take, you know, a couple months and then they'll they'll be the the red everybody wants, but they start oh, like this. Know. Yeah, they're all, there's a bunch of them. I mean, even like that, that's a good looking fish. Mm -hmm. Well, so just want everyone to know that. So if you order them and you're like, that's not red, I'm like, yes, you're right. <laughs> Not yet. It's not. <laughs> Got to be patient in this hobby. Oh, there's some, there's some of this too. So, Dystocotus, which is like Africa's version of a Leperinus, maybe. These guys. Those are out of uh, the Congo. Okay. Just a really different African kerosene. Do you know how big they get? Is that like full size? Oh, they're size? a mini. Yeah, about. Okay. They might get a little bigger than that. The literature says three to four inches. I've never seen them bigger than like two and a half, and we have had them for quite a while. What do you say? They're my favorite. That's what I've been wanting forever. Oh, really? The Dystocotus to go say, yeah, that's what I wanted forever. They're just like. Have you, have you seen them bigger than like two and a half? No. Inches? Yeah, they're mm -hmm. little mini. That's they're the beautiful when they like are in the sun, though. They're, they get a. So the black stripe has a lot of like green and Green blue spangling, yeah, yeah, they're beautiful. Really nice. Con color, aka the slate quarry. These are built like tanks. Yeah. Like these are ones that get they just look different as adults. They're like a tall, bulky they've been to the gym a lot and they've eaten a lot of protein. That's what they look like when they're full grown. These are some more that I got from you. They doing well? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Good, yep. good. So we have three tanks of the CW, or the C-123s. Um, it's like an elegance type that gets yellow on the fins. It's hard to see the yellow on it, the it camera. It is. But. Well, not just that, but it also takes a little while for, it to, for them to settle in enough for it to come down. But I've seen them settled in after, you know, there's a group I had before that I had for probably three months and they definitely got the lemon yellow fins. Yep. But the ones I got from you are nice and yellow. Yeah. It just is, it's a patience game, but they're doing good. We lost only three um, when they first came in and the rest have been doing solid, good bellies. These guys are eating prepared foods, no problem. So uh, really happy with them. 
And same story with the others. Uh, one loss in here and I a couple losses in there. From my experience, pretty hardy. Yeah, yeah. All right, Celebes rainbows. A perpetual problem fish for me. <laughs> for more than just you, that's for and sure. I don't know why. I'll be like, okay, they're ready to sell, and I'll go to list them, and then one will go down. Okay, so I'll delist them. If we could go by, I'll be like, okay, everyone looks good. I'll list them, one will go down. Like, Probably I, the most fragile rainbow I've ever owned. I, I, Frustrating. Like, are they brackish? Is that the problem? I, I really can't figure them out. So I have sent these into the vet as well. The vet doesn't have any answers for me, so like, I don't know what to do. So. I'm probably just not going to bring them in anymore. I had to stop. Okay, this next fish is Rivulus ornatus. It's a killifish, and it is the most escape-prone, jump out of your tank and dry up on the floor fish that I've ever experienced. But they're really neat. So they're an egg layer, a non-annual from um, Peru. Okay, maybe they're under here. I see one on the back wall. Yeah. I'm hoping that there'll be a few in here. Yep. They hide so well. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to show up on the camera, but there's one. So good body weight. They came in perfect. They individually bagged every one of these. Like they treated them right. Yeah, that's nice. And we've had, I don't think we've had a single loss or problem or concern. They've been awesome. Well, the only concern is, are they going to jump? You'll always have to be <laughs> careful of that. It's fish. All right. Japan blue gold guppies just males left we sold all the pairs we had uh, these came in from a hobbyist so that's always nice and they're just pretty yeah that's a good looking fish not a rare fish or anything but look at those like as far as weight goes and size goes and everything this is a fantastic group i've always loved bolivians nice Peaceful, hardy, another tank of them. Then a pleco, um, a lentipus species. That's the genus. Good luck finding out what the species is on any of these lentipus though. So, unique little goby of the lentipus type. <laughs> that's, that's as far as we know. Now these are carnivores, so these don't graze algae as much as like your stiffodons and things. So you do need to feed frozen bloodworms and brine shrimp. And is that, that kind basically of all lentipets or? Yeah, all lentipets I've had, yes. Okay, that's good to know. So these are albino pineapple hyphen males. These are the veil tail variety. You can tell because they don't have the patterning on the uh, body that a typical pineapple would have. And I don't know, like a lot of people are not library people, but they always stop at this tank. Yeah, the, the colors just stand out. Yeah. They're so bright. That fin is amazing. Another killifish, a Phaneus mento, a really hardy, oh, he doesn't like the light, so. <laughs> He's like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, someone just put a, turned a bright light on. But uh, the males turn dark, like, like black, 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 with these bright white flecks all over them. Kind of like some of the pygmy sunfish do. Are they annuals or? No, these are non-annuals, and they come from the Middle East. I'm not a killifish guy, so yeah. I don't know if that was a dumb question, but. No, no, it's a good <laughs> question, because the annuals don't tend to, to live as long. So it's good to know what you're getting into. These, these don't live in habitats that dry up. So they, they live year round. Random guppy strain. This is, uh, these are not like from the same breeder I get these other ones. These are from uh, one of the breeders I tried before that when I was trying different ones to try to get them healthy. So they're healthy, but uh, you can tell the difference in quality, right? Yeah, I can tell just by the fins. Yeah, they're not, they're pretty, but this is not like a, a very stable line. Yeah. Look at this. This is cool. Oh wow, I didn't realize they were this big. Check these out, yeah. So these are from Burma. They're one of the, the lizard loach species. They've been absolutely wonderful for us. No losses, no problems, they eat prepared foods. They're simple. And look at how they shimmer on the back wall. That's mm -hmm. what I love. Their pectoral fins are always moving. 
and it just looks like this glittery curtain of fish on your back wall. I just, now every, that's a fish I'd spawn. Yeah. All right, here's the, uh, the opals. You Just getting big enough to show a little bit of it. See a little bit of color there. Yep. And some uh, snail eggs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Procelia gilli, a strain of wild, a wild molly species. Huh. Um, got this bright red fins with the black contrast on them. Like that guy. Yep. He's, he's probably the dominant male. Awesome. Of course, he only sent us like two females, but <laughs> you know. Overrun by Rick May's blue dream shrimp, and then just a whole bunch of charcoal blacks. Some of my favorite shrimp. And they really are pretty. Yeah. And what I've found is these are not a hard line to maintain. There are some shrimp that if you don't like work the line and work the line, they get muddy real quick. We've never worked this line. like. We will take some out occasionally, put them in a new tank, and we'll pick the best ones when we do that. But in general, they're pretty stable. Um, some are lighter, some are darker, but they're all nice blue. Yep. So here is what a normal rosy barb looks like compared to those others. Huge difference. Yeah. Still a pretty fish, but not like that. It, those stop you in your tracks. These are like, yep, that's a rosy barb. Yeah, especially like these guys here. Yeah. Big, di big, big difference. Those really are yellow. Yeah. Yep. Yellow guppies. Um, again, as we were trying different suppliers, this is one we, we got. And we got a pretty stable group of these guys, but we ended up not sticking with the supplier because others, others they sent us didn't do as well. Well, if you like yellow, those are for you. Yeah. All right. Geos Vegas Veni. Geophagus, Geophagus, Svenai, and then um, some Lanatania Fredericii from Kian. Good size on those Svenai. They're starting, they're almost to the point where they're gonna color in. Uh, they're not listed though, because we keep having random losses with them. And uh, that's been going on for a long time. And we don't have any answers, the vet doesn't have any answers. So when that happens, we just wait. And sometimes, several months later, they'll fully stabilize. Sometimes they won't. So we don't know what to do with them. Hmm. Except for weight. It's unfortunate. All right. All right, we're counting back from Q. <laughs> we're on row M. <laughs> we'll get to A eventually. These are the uh, coral reds. Beautiful pencil fish. Oh. This is the one tank I'm concerned about. Oh, yeah, yeah. there he goes. This is the one tank that uh, we've had some problems in. Um, this is why every bag that comes in gets its own tank, because even though the fish are from the same supplier, for some reason, some bags do better than others. And I just think it has to do with uh, if a couple died in the bag and then you get some ammonia poisoning going on and all that. So this is the one tank I'm worried about. Well, hopefully they heal up. They're doing, they're doing fairly well. This okay. is a neat goby. These guys are really cool. Yeah, these are the sharp tail gobies. And the, uh, the dorsal fins on them, it's hard to see it when they have it held down, but it's huge. It's huge. And when they dance, they raise that thing up and they shake it around. And it just looks like a lace. Really interesting fish. Yeah, these are just cool. Been hardy from day one. They eat prepared foods from day one, like just a super easy. They aren't tearing each other to bits, which is great for gobies. So, yeah, really neat. They look like they belong in like a tidal pool, but they're doing great in fresh water. Uh, another very underrated tetra. Yes, in my the hummingbird tetra. Yep. So, Charisidium species. You never know quite which one you're getting. Maybe it's Fasciatus, I, I don't know, but yep. Well, uh, they just hover, I mean, like hummingbirds. Yeah, yeah, and they, I think they don't have a swim bladder. They have a very reduced one, so they kind of hop around the bottom sometimes too. It's kind of yeah. like a little darter. <laughs> All right, Luminatus. 
My Suda favorite. Miguel Illuminatus. My favorite Suda Miguel. Yep, absolutely beautiful, peaceful, everything, bright blue eyes, and not too pricey. You can get those at a decent price point. Nice. All right, some uh, rose line barbs, and we bought these as regular rose line barbs, but there's some golds in there. So obviously the farms are starting to mix them together. Yeah. Um, so they're still pretty, and you can tell the ones that are true rose lines versus the others because of the kind of more modeled pattern that mm -hmm. they have, but. Yeah, they're starting to focus so much on the golds, I think, that uh, I wonder if it's going to be harder to get, you know, nor oh, I'll leave this down for the B-roll, normal rose lines in the future. I'm not sure. They have started selling wild collected rose lines again, and they are managing that fishery very well. It used to be a horrible fishery, but they fixed that. Wow. Um, but I haven't tried them yet. All right, so this is Chilitharina alani wapoga. These uh, are Johannes Graf's strain. He bred a certain... So when he was collected in the wild, he noticed that very rarely he would find one with a red top, kind of up by the head. And so he separated those out, and he's been re breeding that for a red line. And so these are his, his red line. Yeah, they look great. Yeah, they're doing pretty darn well. And there's a couple skinnies in there, but... In general, they're doing great, and uh, the color on top is, if you compare them to a normal Alani, um, or Chilitharina Alani Wapoga, it's, uh, it's quite different. Yeah. Yeah, those look really good. Nigerianus Red. A little red on this guy. Similar to a crib, but different. Nice. Oh, I just love all the gobies. Yeah. This is my first time seeing these. Reddy gobius leveri. Now, are these uh, carnivore, omnivore? They're, they have the mouth parts for carnivore. Um, and they love bloodworms, but they also eat flakes and all that stuff. That makes it easy. Yeah, so easy. And then we also have... Oh, wow. Clowns. Lots and lots of clown plecos. I love clown plecos because they, they, they look similar to a lot of your kind of fancier high-end plecos. They're very hardy. They're kind of pretty. Extremely hardy. And yeah, very hardy. And, uh, and the price point is great. They're not expensive. Yeah, the oldest fish in my fish room is a clown. Oh yeah? How old? Since I've got back into fish keeping, Oh, geez. Long time ago. Jeez. And every time I pull them out when I'm moving tanks, I'm like, I can't believe you're still kicking. Some mollies. And then these back here are the Cali Moishi. Well, it's any Cali Moishi. It's mid afternoon now, so. Yeah. Maybe we can get them in the morning when they're really showing up nicely. And then here's some giant autos. They're doing okay for us. Um, they came in looking really good. We've had a few losses since, yeah, but in, oh yeah, yeah. But in, but I think they're gonna be okay. I think they'll pull out. So I've checked their bellies and things. They, they seem to be good. Um, there's a few in there though that do have sunken bellies and then all the rest have nice full bellies. So I'm not sure if they didn't get enough food or if they have a parasite or something. So we're putting them through the meds and stuff. Now, do you think these are as efficient as no. just the regular? Not, not at algae eating. Yeah, yeah, these are not as much of an algae eater. In fact, we occasionally give them bloodworms oh, wow. just, to, just to entice them. So these are a geo. We've had some issues with these guys. See this? They just, one's go, oh, there's one going down now. Yeah, it's another one we haven't been able to figure out. But the uh, Moanatani Miata Village have been rock solid and tomorrow morning they'll probably be colored in they get this well i sent you a video i think mm -hmm. yeah a uh, big black i don't know what you call it horizontal bar across the body and then bright orange fins they're really pretty now when they're flashing. as far as selling so these ones aren't doing that well right but the rainbows are but they're in the same tank so do you hold off on these two or i would if they were being affected at all but they've been together since 
April. Okay. Yeah, and hasn't been an issue at all for them. Uh, there are times though, like if we had just put them in and we noticed there was an issue, um, well, these went through quarantine no problem. They were just fine. So we moved them and then a little while later, they started developing problems. Um, so I don't know if they got something from the rainbows, I doubt it. The rainbows are aquarium bred and they've been here for a long time with no problems. But it's just a, it's just a guessing thing of like, does it seem like it's something contagious or something whatever, like we... Rainbows make it pretty apparent when there's something wrong yeah, too, so. Yeah, I wish, I wish there were clear answers. Like, I just wish you always knew what was happening. So, yeah, you kind of have to make your best judgment call. Some more good looking slates. Yep, slates with some uh, headstanders. These are the punctatus. These guys came in and have had no problems. Yeah, these look excellent. Wow. They're doing fantastic. For are us. they hobbyist bred or? No, these came in from Peru. Yeah, they, these so, are. These, might be, these are definitely the best punctatus I've ever seen. Yeah, they're. Oh, the spots just look great. Their bellies are nice and full. They they don't like prepared foods that much yet, so we're supplementing with blood worms so that they don't lose weight. Um, but they have good weight, and they're, they'll explore the pellet and kind of move on, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a patience game. All right, hyphen albino pineapple swords. I mean, I don't have to talk about them. The, <laughs> no. the, the video will do it all. Yep. But the difference between those and some of the other kind of pineapple-based varieties is the more color on the body. Awesome. Yeah. Cherry shrimp. <laughs> Whole lot of cherry shrimp. <laughs> and then these are the Xanthomelis. So this is a true freshwater bumblebee goby. So this one I know will do well long term because I've had them long term many times. Yeah, these are always fun. Dude, they're so cute. Like little bulldogs. They're just little pug faces. <laughs> <laughs> well, these we're struggling with um, getting these better, but I think we're pretty close. So initially they came in with some heavy losses. Um, they're starting to get have babies and stuff though now too. So that's good. And then we changed the medication regime on them and we figured them out. So I think these are gonna be okay. But it's gonna be a little while before we can sell them. But they're, they're beautiful, the platinum mosaic. Yeah, I, I really like I'm not much of a guppy person, but these are, these are great. Yeah. Oh, the old glass head stander. Yeah, were these here last yeah. year when you were here? Yeah. Well, it's the same batch. <laughs> like this is the worst business decision I ever made was bringing these in. I think- But they're, they're so cool. I think they're amazing. I think they're such a unique fish. They're just fantastic. Like there's nothing else that looks like that but no one else agrees. <laughs> do they ever like actually do the head standing or do they just, are they always active like that? When they're still, they kind of tilt down a little bit, but they aren't like on their face Like vertical. the other ones, yeah. yeah. No, no. In fact, they're not even closely related to the others. It's just <laughs> the, the, the industry decided to call them that. Um, they're a Cherax species. But yeah, I can't, I can't sell them. <laughs> so they're my pets now, I guess. There you go. Kiungas. I love these guys. I want oh, to taste species some half beaks too. And yes, yes, yes. And a really nice half beak, nice and big, and uh, just hardy and awesome. I like the orange on the fins of those guys too. Yeah, I've, I've never kept half beaks, but I've always loved them. I don't know why. I don't have a. I don't have a reason. I just it hasn't happened for me yet. <laughs> they, the cool thing about half beaks is they'll strut their stuff like all day long. Like if you just watch them for a minute. I'm sure. Yeah, that guy is really it. cool. Okay, I'm excited about this. This is Aphiolebius. Used to be called Terralebius peruensis. It's an annual killifish from Peru. And I think they're awesome. Oh yeah, there we go. Wow, so this is like the whole, you gotta raise the fry like out of water. Yes, or yeah, the eggs, the, the eggs yeah, uh, incubate will be them out. incubated dry, yeah. well damp. 
they're spawning here all the time, but you know, nothing's gonna come of it, but. Yeah. Wow, those are nice. Yeah. Yep. See this guy, he wants to breed. Oh yeah. He's trying to coax her down into the, what he thinks is mud <laughs> that he can dive into. Um, some feather fin tetras and these are Millennium Rainbows, but they're location specific. These are from Yarnak. Okay. Like all Millennium Rainbows, though, they don't get their true color till they're like yeah. big. They're starting to get some color, but it's going to be a while. My favorite guppy. Like these. These came in. This is our second batch of these ever. The first batch came in, and I was like, yep, that's it. That is just stunning. Both batches that we've got from this breeder have done fantastic. They're healthy and just, this is one that pops from across the room for me. Yeah, you can see these from far away. Like, it, with that sheen, that metallic sheen on their body, yep. just looks, oh, and Dumbo ear. Yep, Dumbo's as well. I didn't even see that at first. If they were uh, in a pond, they would glow. Like, they good in an aquarium, good in a pond. And uh, I might have to get some for my tubs. They're so neat. Nice, wow. clean, crisp colors. Very consistent. I mean, look at that strain. So I'm really, wow. really happy with those. Yeah, those are amazing. These were sent to us as a Stiphodon peloensis, but they're not. They're Ornatus, which is still nice. But we already had a tank of Ornatus. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of wanted peloensis. But you get what you get and you don't complain. All right, on row L, let's start off with the a pistol viejita, maybe, maybe McMaster Eye. These are marked down really far on the website because if you look at them, they're totally healthy. But if you look at the ventral fins, you can see some that don't have any, some that just have little nubs, some that have, I, I don't know what happened to the ventral fins on this batch, but they don't look perfect. So healthy fish going to turn into, I mean, you can see the color coming in on some of them like, like that, oops. <laughs> like that guy but uh since the ventral fins aren't what they should be we've discounted them a ton so if you like pretty fish and don't care if they have perfect fins this is a deal okay some of the best corridoras ever yep these are from rick may bred and raised by rick may these are corridors venezuelanus rick has just the best fish ever i i say that he's our region's dean. Uh, he breeds tons of fish and every couple months he just drives up and brings an SUV full of fish for me. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, there you go. And his fish do amazing for us. Just really good. Yeah, these are super underrated. I mean, you got people paying like 40, 40, 30, 40 dollars for an Equius, but these guys are pretty dang close in my opinion. Like this one Bright right here. Bright orange with yep. the nice contrast with the blotches. Yeah, they're they're awesome. Also hardy, also super easy to breed. Like there's there's no negative on this fish. Yep. No negative at all. Sweet. Oh, so you still have mouth? Still have mouth. Mouth has been with us for a long time. Let's see if we can find mouth. Mouth is usually over in this corner, but I see her right there. I just don't know if you can see her. No. So let me... Uh, See if I can just move this without losing a it's finger. Like a mascot. Yeah, there she is. That is Mouth. Mouth has been with us for, geez, five years? I don't know. Long time. Maybe longer, actually. But look at that. She is a dragon puffer, a.k.a. a potato. <laughs> <laughs> and she just sits there all day. She's a sit and wait ambush predator. So she sits still until a, a prey item, like a fish, these guys eat a lot of fish, um, swims in front of her mouth. And then there's this very quick snap that's so fast you can't see it, but you can hear it and you can feel it. Like if you're touching the front of the tank when she does it, you can feel the impact. Wow. It's kind of like mantis shrimp, like I guess. Mouth will eat them. Yeah, don't put your <laughs> fingers in the tank, folks. So anyway. Awesome. Good to see mouth again. Yeah. And doing great. Like, it's never been a problem. Okay, up top, but in the back, so they're going to be hard to see, are Pseudomugal Ivan Safi. And then we also have in there some um, albino platinum sailfin mollies. Liar tail. Every, every, like, 
library is a mouthful. It's like <laughs> five words to get it right. Seems that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this guy's got him nice. Yeah, there's a good one right there. Yeah, they're pretty. More from Venezuelans. More from Rick. You have like 200 of them, don't you? We have, so we, we like <laughs> buy them out. As many as you can produce, we buy at a time. I don't think there's a lot down here. This tank's mostly sold out, but there is an L600 in here. And so it's probably worth taking a moment to appreciate him. See that bright orange tail? Oh, oh. that's one of the, like, the red fins or? Yeah, one of the cactus. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean, yeah, cactus with like a leopard cactus type with a bright orange tail Come fan. on, buddy. There, there he goes. goes. Like, look at that. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. That is such a pretty fish. Now, these get big. This is gonna be a 14 inch fish or so when it's full grown. Maybe not quite that big, but it's gonna be a large fish and very spiky. This is one you need protective gloves to handle when it's an adult. I can still handle him now, but barely. He's getting to the point where he's spiky enough that it's uh, getting rough. Yeah, and these a, are, uh, they're an omnivore, but you want a lot of meat in the diet, kind of like a hyponcystrus. All right, neon yellow calico platies, like my favorite platy, just because they're cheap, they're hardy, and they absolutely pop from across the room. Lots like, of color. That's just so bright and cheerful and happy. So I like them. Brighten up your day. I would say if, if you've got a kid that wants to get in the fish, like that's a great starter. Then here, these are the um, cauliflower hyphen swords, uh, but not the albino version. So these have regular eyeball, like a black eyeball. And then the males on the sword, there's a very fine black edge on the bottom margin yeah, of the can sword, barely which see is it. hard to see. Like they're almost as bright as the albino. I really like this red. Nice deep. Yeah, nice deep red, and those fins are just crazy good. Another good, good one for tubs. You'll be able to see those easily. Absolutely. All right, this is Limia Perugier. This is our breeding colony. What, just an awesome fish. These come from uh, I. What's the island? It's Dominican Republic and Haiti. It is the same island, right? I can't remember which side they come from, but one of those. Mere bright mirror iridescent scales on the sides of the males with nice lemon yellow on the tail. Like look at this guy. Yeah. And black edges. And they breathe like crazy. Like just I just some got some of them. these. From this tank from someone who bought them from oh, you. Oh someone bought them, bred them and <laughs> passed them on? Yeah. Oh that's awesome. I'm glad yeah. to hear that they're doing Now well. I got them in a tub outside. See how well they do outside. These are a whole bunch of babies from that female uh, red hump earth eater up there and some mollies. Nice. Um, Corridors Barbatus. Oh, I love these. Or not Corridors, Square Masters. Yes. Yeah. Probably soon to be Corridors, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it's always going back and forth. These get, what, four or five inches. Uh, really big, beautiful fish as adults. Right now, they're kind of modeled. But. Yeah, I brought these in and they, they didn't even make it 24 hours. I was so bummed. They are a tricky one. Colors starting to come in on the yellow band trophies. Oh, I do like these ones. Yeah, those are the ones from Icola, and so they get the just the yellow band. Uh huh. Yep, yep. Yellow band, and then a dark front half, and I think back half of the body as well. Um, and Aspidorus, that's all his friends got sold. So yeah, the, the ones he sent me last year. Uh huh. I put him in a in a twenty long, and just. The whole thing is just matted full of plants. Like you can't even see an inch in. Uh -huh. And for months I didn't see any of them. And I was like, I kind of gave up. But I was still feeding because there's other fish in there. And then I started pulling out plants and pulling them back. And there's just, I, there's got to be like a hundred of yeah, them yeah. in there now. I was going to say, it's crazy. I bet you have so many. Oh man. Yeah, they spawn, they're the easiest fish to spawn ever. Um, we just caught fish out of here. And to do that, we had to pull up this big clump of java moss, so all the mold that was under it just got released. But these are Zephophorus milleri, the Catamaco live bearer, um, basically a sword tail without a sword, yellow fish with black spots and flecks all over it, and breeding like crazy. Like, yeah. we started off with a couple, and they just keep going. Yeah, they look, I actually like these ones. Red dragon guppies, where the females are maybe prettier than the males. <laughs> it's, it's a very interesting strain. 
Um, these were bred and raised by hobbyists, and they keep doing it here too. So we just have a colony of them going. Makes it easy. Parrots, these are the platinum parrots, and the reason I bring these in instead of the others is these have functional mouths. Okay, well that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, I feel, uh, I feel sorry for the red parrots because their mouths can't even actually close. Only have a few of these left, but look at the color on those. Are these full grown? I don't know. I would love to say they are because I think they might be a teacup. That would be a really good size. But I don't know yet. I haven't had them long enough. They look the teacup shape though. Yeah. And they have the teacup color, so I think they might be. We're selling them is uh, red coral platys, I believe. Just because I don't want to false advertise. Yeah, sure. We do have some Rabaudi, which I, I don't, I might have to flip that plate just briefly. Like, there's a lot in there. Oh yeah, I think they're called the Rust Quarry. Yeah, which is such an unfortunate name. I know. <laughs> it's like, let's pick the ugliest name we can. They're a skunk quarry species. They call them the Rust Quarry. Yeah, they got the nice black stripe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super, pretty underrated in my opinion. Praycocks. Oh. A whole yeah. bunch of them. You can see the blue sheen on all, all yeah. of them. It just looks really cool. And I mean, what's the biggest one? Just over an inch? Like, yeah. they get so much color as they grow. Then here's Napoensis. This is one you probably are going to like. Oh, Look at that gold yeah. spot on the head. Yeah. And then that beautiful pattern. We have some juveniles too that we'll see later, but this is what they look like as adults, folks. Like bright gold spot up on the head. Absolutely beautiful pattern. It's kind of like the poor man's Pantanalensis in a way, mm -hmm. I think. But I think they're almost as pretty as Pantanalensis. They just don't get as big. Pantanalensis gets like four inches. It's a, it's a monster. But yeah, Napoensis. Albino platinum red tail guppies. I don't really have to say any more than that, because look at them. That's it. It's beautiful. Um, and of course, I love a pisto. Nice and I, these came in in pretty rough shape, so we divided them in two tanks. This tank we gave uh, canamycin and nitro. The tank up, there's a tank up uh, close by that we gave, uh, we treated for parasites instead. These guys did a lot better, so now we know. Okay, these are the ninja cats, ninja wood cats. Oh yeah, the Tatia uh, uh -huh. something. All right. So now, let's just show you these guys. Like I check their bellies every couple weeks just because, you know, I want to make sure they're doing well and they've been eating like champs. I, look at that, the fat and happy. Like I've uh, unsuccessfully tried to spawn these. Did you get any action at all? No, not uh, even. But failed miserably. Like, I don't know, that looks totally they're, healthy they're to me. Awesome, like, look yeah. at that. They're eating like champions for us. I love the white spots on the bellies. Yeah, so anyway, I love that fish. They hide a lot, but they always came out when they come feed. out to eat. Yeah, yeah and they're, they are rambunctious eaters. Voracious. All right, pea puffers. Enough said. <laughs> super cool. Like murder beans, super fun little miniature puffer. More the merrier, in my opinion. Yeah. So, yeah, I used to be hesitant. I thought they'd pick on each other, but I've never seen it. They've no, been great together. Yeah. No, but I actually got in an argument with someone about putting them in, in groups like this. This was years and years ago. And the guy actually sent me a video of them in the wild, and there's like just schools oh. of thousands together. I've read that. And I'm yeah. like, okay, you win. <laughs> yeah. You win. They'll only be hanging out for a second, but I think there's some Angelicus. There's one. Wow, really nice polka dots. Yeah, not such a good tail, though. That's what they should look like. Wow, that's... That's pretty. That's a pretty pleco. Yeah. I love anything with polka dots. This is another sore tail. This is the um, blonde Vienna guppy with the bottom sword. And they're doing well for us. They've started dropping fry and everything. So pretty happy with this batch. Yeah, it looks good. And, and we had a ton, like we're down to that many. So that's good, because that means people are buying them, which is great. Um, oh, they're far in the back, but these are Ivan Safai's and we have a location on these. These are from Tamika. Uh, Jeffrey Christian collected these. Well, the parents. He, 
these are aquarium bred and raised, but the parents he collected in Tamika. Nice. So hopefully we can get good B-roll of those because that's a fantastic fish. See more shrimp? Yeah. Oh, and yellow. Yellow back shrimp and a, another Angelicus pleco. So this is L136A, so it's going to have smaller spots and an intact tail, let's hope. There you go. Yeah, definitely smaller spots. Yeah. So there's A, B, C, B's mid-grade, and then C has like pretty darn big spots on it. And then our colony of uh, yellow back, or gold back yellow shrimp, I think is how you say it. Yellow gold back shrimp, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I see more loaches. Yes. Yes. So these are a different species of Sowellia. Look at the back. You see the yeah, back I can already there? see it. <laughs> wow. So more spotted, still a little bit reticulated. Uh, we do have a, the actual ID now. I had a loach expert look at them and ID'd them for me. It's on the website. I don't remember um, the actual scientific name. Pearl, or not pearl, yeah, pearl danios. Another underrated fish. Like the purple and pink on these, you never see in pictures, but in person, it's just a really nice, subtle lavender fish, I guess is how I would describe it. What's uh, what's down here? A contaminant loach. Okay. Which, mystery uh, loach? we're calling it a banded loach, I guess. But yeah, we get a lot of contaminants in. and They're fun, <laughs> but half the time we don't know what they are. No contaminant Asian arowanas yet? No. <laughs> No, that's right. For some reason. Dang. All right, there's some George Creek Melanotanian nigrans. Okay, I don't think I've ever seen George Creek. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time I've heard of them. Oh, um, they're starting. I see a couple flashing. A couple, too. couple are starting to yeah get their blaze going. Wow. Samurai grammys, several tanks yeah. of them. Um. We have great luck with this supplier. The supplier does it right. Um, they come in with nematodes, but that's very easy to treat. So I think they're actually done their treatment of that. And now it's time to just fatten them up a bit. Perfect. And two more weeks, they'll be really pretty, the females. You can barely see the kind of vertical striping pattern coming in on a few of those. Those are females that are just starting to oh, okay. be settled in enough that they're going to color up within the next couple of weeks. Perfect. And then the last fish on this row, row K, is Monotania Sembra. And Phoenix Cetra, that's right. And a Phoenix It looks like one, a one Phoenix, Phoenix Cetra. Cetra. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Gold Tetras and Melanotania Picta. Just wow. one or two Picta left. Yeah, I know. Look at the action <laughs> in that thing. Well, it's because there's a camera right there. Ooh. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. And then another fish that we figured out and we do right are rummy nose tetras. Um, we can bring these in. We know the correct suppliers now. We know how to land them and get them healthy. And yeah, these are one of those fish where I've never gotten healthy. Right. Rummy -nose. They have a reputation for just being, you know, people try and try and try and then give up. So my message to anyone who has tried and tried and given up is try one more time with us. Try yes. ours. Yes, we're going to be expensive, but that's because we've got them to the point where they're going to do well for you. And if you add up all the money you spend on the dead ones, these are still cheaper. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> generally true. And we have a 100% guarantee, like we'll, get, we'll refund the cost of the fish and the shipping if there's problems. So uh, we do everything we can to help people get healthy fish. I do love gobies. Duospilus, the white cheek goby, formerly called Rhinogobius wooi, or wooey, now called Duospilus. Just a f such a fun fish. Like, they've got the color, they've got all that, but the personality plus is what these have. And they display by raising their head up almost vertically, looking at the sky and puffing out their gills, and they have these bright red lines on their gills the bottom of the uh, operculum um, throat area I guess oh I just missed it against white but they're constantly like puffing that out to say I'm the boss Sturbys? Sturbys! A few left looks like we've sold most of this tank but 
so much color and not a real high price. So bang for the buck, these in the orange Venezuelans for color, I yeah. think are are awesome. Yeah, you have really good prices on the on both of them, especially considering the source. Yeah. All right, these are some uh, Fasten Creek Fastenensis. Want to you Fastenensis from Fasten Creek, I guess I should say. It's mid-afternoon, folks, so <laughs> no one's fired up, but they've, they've been good for us, except for the wonky one there, but wonky fish happen. All right, yeah, those shrimps. So this is our pumpkin spice shrimp. Um, this is restarting the colony because the other colony is starting to throw ones that aren't as dark orange as we want. So this is just to keep the quality up, pick the best ones and start a new colony. But they're in here with the most expensive fish we have which is the Super White Pleco. These are true RB strain L236 Super Whites. And they're stunning. And these are almost probably breeding size by now. That's a, what yeah, would you that's say? That's size. a three and a half, four inch fish, I think. Um, I love our breed. We get these from a specific breeder and his quality's always been awesome. So, yeah, those are beautiful. So pretty. And, and we know the provenance. We know they're the real thing. So I'm trying not to smash anybody. I think we're good. Um, oh, yeah, gold lasers, CW10s. Let's see how many there are in here. There's a few in there. Ooh, We've got yeah. other tanks that, are, that have tons, so we'll probably get better video on those. Funnel of Panjax Garden Ray, my all-time favorite fish. People ask me, what's your favorite fish? It's this one. This is the first killifish I ever spawned and raised successfully. Um, I hunted it down when I was 13, finally got a pair, bred them and raised them, and, and the, the triumph of that experience has never left me. Like, I, I just still love them for that nostalgic reason. Nostalgic reason, I guess. Plus, also, they're beautiful, they're hardy, they're prolific. And then there's some raccoon tetras in there. Those are kind of the, uh, the runts, I suppose you'd say, of the litter. Um, we have to sort those. A few of them, their fins aren't quite right, so we have to sort through those before we list any more for sale. Amazon Puffer's just working on getting them fat and sassy, and it takes us a long time, but we're happy to do it. This is exciting. This is Aplicylus dei. Oh, wow. This is another killifish. These are out of Sri Lanka. That's where they're native to. Um, I've been on the hunt for these for a long time. I had these when I was 14. I bred them and raised them. I've had them off and on over the years since, and I was finally able to bring more in. They're really pretty. The females are the ones with those vertical black bars that go kind of halfway up the, the back half of the body, and the males are the ones with a few faint black markings, but the long extended gold anal fin. Okay. So both sexes are really pretty. Yeah, those are nice. So we looked at the super white L236. This is what the regular L236 looks like. This is what they look like naturally. Still a very pretty fish, but you'll see the difference. Oh yeah. More These are yellow. Still nice though. More yellow and um, a lot more, well, a lot, a lot less white. Yep. <laughs> a lot more worm <laughs> pattern. Still a pretty fish though. Like if you like that kind of fish and don't want to splurge for a super white, these aren't cheap but they're a lot cheaper than a super way. And look at the size and health of these guys. I mean, these are just... Yeah, there's some big ones. Look at this guy. Robust. I bet they're breeders. If someone got these, I bet that once they settled in, which could take a year, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I think they're big enough that they could do it. And then they're in here with another Celebi shrimp. So these are another wild shrimp out of one of the Sulawesi lakes. Look at the, this white egg saddle on them. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're pretty neat. And then, so they're a bee shrimp, but obviously they're highly variable. And these are wild, so this is not like any kind of captive breeding going on, like a strain that isn't fixed or something. These are just what they're like in the wild, highly variable. Okay, I love these guys. They're so pretty. Not Lots super expensive, not super rare, but look at that fish. Yeah. Blue coral calico platys. Tons of color. Yeah. So this is probably worth a little time. I know we're trying to rush, but okay, look at this. Look at all these problems we've had. 
right? This is not good. We, this tank has just been struggling from the get-go. This tank, not a single loss. Not a single one. Wow. Same supplier, same box, two different bags. This came in with 13 DOAs. Oh, wow. So, oh, okay. So this is why it's so important to be careful when you ship, because obviously these fish were completely healthy when they were bagged, because the ones that traveled well had been 100% solid. But this is why you take all the time to bag fish properly, because the two different experiences they had during that transit, something happened that knocked these guys out. I have a feeling that one fish died and then another fish Started died chain and then you got an, a big ammonia boom or something and they got ammonia poisoning. But just same supplier, same box, same everything, just two different bags. It just shows you how big an impact shipping can have mm -hmm. on a fish. Skunk quarries finally settling in. We still haven't been able to list this batch yet, and we've had them since April, um, but they're still not quite there. A little midwater swimming happening. Yeah. Still trying to figure out what's going on there, but if we ever do, we'll list them for sale. If not, we'll just keep trying. All right. Oh, what's going on here? So years ago, um, I only did discus, and a lot of people still know me for discus, and I keep getting asked, are you going to do discus? And my answer is no, because I don't keep my water temperature that high. But I do know a gentleman that's uh, my kind of mentor with fish who's been to the Amazon like Oops. nine times and collected. And he's like, but discus in the wild live with all the other fish in the normal temperatures. Like, and they, sh you know, he's kept fish at normal temperatures. Um, so he's like, I, I think it's a myth that they have to have high temperatures. Wouldn't surprise me. So the first thing I did is I tried rams. I brought in wild rams because they're more likely to be tolerant of our temperatures here. They did great. Then I bought in gold rams and we'll see all these. Gold rams did great. So I brought in electric blue rams. They've done great. Well, rams are supposed to be 82 to 84 degrees if everyone, if you know, you listen to the internet but we keep ours at 79 and they're doing fantastic. So I talked to my supplier and I said, I've got 79 degree water. What do you think? And he said, yeah, I think that these discus I have are gonna be fine at that. I don't necessarily keep them at super high temperatures. So I said, can you just send me six inexpensive ones? I just wanna see how they'll do. So this is what he sent me. I'm holding on to them for at least a month. I just want to see how they do at 79 degrees. Um, with all our constant flow through and everything and constant fresh water, I think they're doing fine. So far, look at them. Um, yeah. It's been, I think, three weeks, something like that. Clear eyes, clear fins. Um, I, I mean, they're inexpensive, you know, so there's peppering and all that, but I think they're gonna maybe be okay, but I'm gonna hold on to them quite a while longer. And if they do well, then I'll try a, a few more from that supplier. And if those do well, then I'll maybe start doing some discus. But it's just the first start of a process to see if they'll do fine in our system. And I know discus divas are gonna freak out when they see how quote unquote dirty this tank is. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that water is cleaner than yours. These guys get 100% water change we have the flow up on this one, so it's probably every 30 minutes they get 100% wow. water change. And all that stuff in there, that's algae and stuff. That's, they, they like to pick through detritus. That's a main part of their diet. If you look at their stomach contents from the wild, they've done analysis on that. A large part of it is detritus. So what discus are eating in the wild is algae and dirt, and every now and then they'll get lucky and find some protein-rich worm or crustacean, but a lot of it's just detritus. Awesome. So anyway, we're trying. There you go. All right, tell me those aren't awesome. Those are pretty awesome. Yeah. So those, those might be my favorite. Yeah. Those. So this was us trying to figure things out. So you can see that it took us a while, but then we did. And we haven't had any losses for quite a while. For a month, yeah. Yeah, and that was a coal. Oops, I sprayed it. So we're getting more from the same supplier now that we've figured out their fish and how to take care of them. Yeah, those but look great. That is such a pretty fish. All right. 
Sorry, I ranted, but we'll go now. Spotted headstanders. If you've never heard these guys eat, and yes, heard, they make a loud clicking noise while they feed. It's kind of interesting. Oh, that's neat. Really unique fish, underrated for sure. Albino thread finicara. It's a pretty popular one too. Yeah. I mean, just wait till they get a little more size. They're stunning. Yeah. All right, trying to fix these guys. I think we did fix them. This was my fault. These guys came in in great shape, didn't have any problems. And then on the 8th, we lost a couple. On the, on the ninth, there was like a whole bunch of, what's going on? I checked, there was a clog in the flow. So oh. they weren't getting the water change and I hadn't realized. So that's my fault, but we'll, we've got the water going now and we've got some antibiotics in there to help them out. But every now and then it's my fault. The lights on these are harder, but hopefully things are going to show okay on these 75 gallon tanks. This is Satana Perca, the fine spot. Um, how do you say it? Matera Pens? The, the species that starts with M. <laughs> and uh, what is this? This is the smallest one over on the left there, three inches. The biggest one, four inches, pushing five? What would you say, Bob? Yeah, probably four or five inches. Yeah, good size. So. The cost for these isn't really high. I love the striations on the face. That's what I like about this fish. Those lines that run from the eye to the mouth. I think that's really cool. And if you're looking for a fish to keep the bottom of your tank nice and clean, these or geophagus, fish like that, that's what you want. These mm -hmm. are Melanotania bosmani from Lake Atinjo. Um, no one's feeling very frisky right now, but when they do, the front half of the body turns very dark and the back half turns orange. You've seen those fully. Oh yeah, yeah, we got some good shots last time I was here. Um, Kamaka rainbows, again, mid-afternoon, not a lot going on, but normally a, a like white hot blaze up, up the top on these ones. Nice blue fish only gets about three inches, so if you like rainbows but don't want monsters, the Kamaka is a great one. Let's see your emerald green dragons. Just oh, barely yeah. big enough that you can see the extension starting to come in on the anal fin of the males, but not big enough to be impressive yet. This is a fish that gets, I'm gonna say seven inches, like a big, big one. And uh, once they hit about three inches or so, then they start getting those impressive extensions on the fins, which is what makes the, whoops, I moved <laughs> my hands, which is what makes the fish. But this is the Wanamensis? This is Wanamensis, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Glossolepsis uh, Wanamensis. Our babies, Congo spotted Your babies puffers. born and raised here? Oh, I wish, <laughs> yeah. Um, still recovering from import, it takes us a while, but a few of these got fat and sassy enough that we sent them out and Rave reviews from the customers. I mean, we don't send them unless they're really in good shape. And uh, these are getting real close. In fact, I see a couple here that yeah, are I mean, probably about ready. Definitely some yeah. chunks in there. Yep. Chunky fish. Um, Dantum angels, which rumor is are a hybrid between Scalaire and um, Altums. That's what Dantum supposedly are. I don't know if I believe it. But either way, that's a pretty fish. What I like about them is look how long and nice those ventral fins are. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of angels, just from all the breeding that's going on, uh, get like, I don't know, bent or deformed or missing ventral fins. So it's nice when you see a strain that has nice long full ones. Kelly Lumpur, a little bit of color this afternoon. That's yeah. not bad. It's not even morning and look at that guy go. So. That's not them fully colored, but we're getting a we're getting a taste, just a little snippet. A thorichthys species, so this is a different species of fire mouth. Uh, which one is this? Eliodi. Okay, so, but they're in here with true centani, centaniensis. I got these from Marcel. So if anyone knows Marcel Woolrich, Woolrith. Sorry, Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows Marcel. Um, that's the source for these, so. I don't think he watches, but I have bought fish from him. <laughs> yeah, so when Marcel says something is something, I'm confident it oh, is. Oh yeah, for sure. And these good definitely guy. look different than the uh, Fasciatus from Lake Santani. We also have those, so we'll show you the difference. Another tank of, see Geophagus and Rainbows are just a match made in heaven. We found that to be an awesome combination. So these are the Cali Web, Chilotherina Fasciata from Cali Web. 
and what is this? Geophagus species garupi. Uh, I don't know more than that. And they're only this big. I've never seen this geophagus full size. Um, these are thin. We're, we're getting more weight on them. Um, but in a little while, they'll Feed have the weight. heavily, yeah. it says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a little while, they'll be fat and sassy and ready to go. River Vitata. Oh, wow. These are looking good. And they've got, uh, they get three inches, so we've still got quite a ways to go. Yeah, they've those. already got really good color. Yep, it's starting. It's starting. Wow. Some gold rose lines here. That's more rubra vitata. Oh, okay. Um, gold rose lines here. The thing about gold rose lines is the variation. Like some are pure white, some are yellow with red, and then some are like mottled. They all kind of start a yellow and red or white, and then with age, some of them the brown starts creeping in again. So you order 12 of those, you'll have like a high variety in your tank. But be aware of that. Um, they don't all look the same by any means. Yep. All right, check these out. Oh, those are nice. Yeah, another, we're working hard on the live bears. These are the hyphen cauliflower red tuxedo sword tails. Wow. And uh, they grab your attention for sure. I just love that deep red. Sex lineata. Tabubu, they'll probably show better down here just because this tank has so much uh, algae on the bottom, it's darker. So in this tank, they show up better against the black. See some of the red lipstick there on some of yeah. them? Yeah, pink lips, bright goldfish. Um, these are adults. They, they don't get bigger than the biggest one here, so two and a half inches or so. So hmm. these are a dwarf. I've never seen them bigger than that. Have you? No, yeah. I've kept them before yeah. too. And nice little dwarf species. You can tell by how tall they are. Right. Latacara fulvapinus is the cichlid. Nice little dwarf cichlid. Fairly peaceful, except for occasionally when they want to spawn, they will. Uh, this one lost the fight. Oh, it's yeah. It's growing back though. But they, you know, cichlids are cichlids. But they're as peaceful as you can expect, I guess. Marisai? Um, these are some of my favorites. This is another one that doesn't get super big. Uh, three inches would be a monster, I'm going to say. Similar to the Kalitawa in many, many ways. Um, I love the black on them. Yeah, they change color all the time. So sometimes they're bright gold, and then sometimes they actually have a lot of this dark color. And this tank tomorrow might be bright gold. <laughs> like it's, it doesn't seem to be the setup. It seems to be mood or something like that. I've seen them all waves. All right, this is my retirement tank. Um, not all the fish, but these archers, I, I, is it eight years now? Like <laughs> these are my old archers, this, they're out to pasture, but they're in here with some, this is probably the rarest fish we have. We're probably the only place in the United States you can buy this fish. This is the mountain grunter. Um, okay, those are way bigger than last year. Oh yeah, we just had little two inches last yeah. time. This is a different batch. They came in a lot bigger. Um, look at the gold on those. That yeah, is a those cool are fish. This way is way more impressive than last time. It's another one that changes constantly. They'll have vertical stripes, they'll have horizontal stripes, or they'll be black with just like spots, like gold spots on them. Hans Evers and Jeffrey Christian collected these from Tamika and they said they never found any bigger than 15 centimeters. So we're talking about seven inches full grown. There's been some debate if they're coal grunters or mountain grunters, I don't know. I, I tend to trust Hans Evers and Jeffrey Christian. Um, but whatever they are, they appear to be one that doesn't grow massive. The problem with a lot of grunters is you're talking about a 20 inch plus fish. Yeah. So um, I've never seen them bigger than this and uh, people I've sold them to, the, they've never got bigger than say six inches or maybe a little bigger. Now they get fat like footballs, but they don't seem to be absolute tank busters. I love those guys. And then this is a Corridor's retirement tank as well. Yeah, they I have can some tell. Really old <laughs> Corys in there. Um, here's Alani Wapoga. So this is the normal one. We we saw the ones with the red tops, right? Yeah. Um, and you'll see the difference. Maybe in here, still a pretty fish, probably one of the prettiest fish, but they don't have the red up on the above the head. So that's kind of the difference between these and the the red form. What's the geophagus? 
Oh, good question. This is Mega Sema. Oh, is, those are cool. Is best as I know. <laughs> I always have to put a caveat with geophagus until they're fully uh, mature. So these are the ones. Um, I got to get a light on this. These are the strawberry leperinus. I can't believe that like everyone doesn't have these. These are amazing fish. They top out at about three inches. The color and pattern is great, and they're peaceful. Yeah. So the problem with most leperinus is they're jerks and they get massive. So they pick on everything, they tear everything to shreds, and they get massive. This has all the color and personality without the aggression and the size. So I think this is like one of the best discoveries I've come across in the last couple of years. And I, I just like, I've done several videos featuring them and no one agrees. Like, oh, I they, think they're awesome. They don't sell. I mean, look at that fish. And they don't harm anybody. So I don't know. I think they're awesome. Another form of, they've bred a lot of different forms of swords from the pineapples. So these, they've bred the color out of the body pretty much. And so they call these a white body red fin pineapples, hyphen albino sword tail. <laughs> what was that, eight words? <laughs> too many, <laughs> eight words, too many. Um, I love- Colettis, remember these? I love them. Yeah. They're Did so you cool. get some? No. Okay. No, unfortunately. Yeah. So these and are just a something beautiful. Something else in here. Oh, there's always contaminants. Like, you buy Colettis and you get Colettis, but you also get that and that and that and that and that. <laughs> yeah. The nice. contaminants are sometimes the fun part, though. Like, what's yeah, that Yeah, the black gonna... spots on the tail, those are kind of cool. And that might be a four inch fish when it's full grown. Like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so, we've had some neat surprises. All right, check these out. Well, it's not the... empty. I didn't even see them there. Yeah, 519s. These are the really tennis ancestress. Really nice honeycomb pattern on them. And once they hit about three inches, the brown becomes orange. Wow. Um, we had one long enough that we've been able to see that transition in the previous batch. Really cool, really pretty fish. And then let me flip that log over. Check these out. Under this wood, we're gonna have ninja shrimp. They're a wild shrimp, and all the variety you're about to see is natural. This was not bred. Look at all oh, that. Oh, wow. Those there's are some reds, amazing. there's some, there's all kinds of color varieties just naturally. Wow, those are cool. Yep. Love those. These, okay, there's one uh, copper nose barb here, that guy with the bright copper nose. And then the rest of these are Taiwan horse mouths. Taiwan, I don't know, they're a side printed from Taiwan, which I got because I'd never heard of it before. And I was like, this will be neat. And it's kind of neat, but it's a, <laughs> it's like a fathead minnow, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's some blue acara in there. Then here's another shrimp. These are the green, ninja, uh, green leaf shrimp. These eat algae as well or better than a mono's. I don't want to say better, but they're just as much an algae eater as your mono shrimp. Oh yeah. They yeah. kind of look like a mono yeah, shrimp. Yeah, they do a little bit. I wonder how closely related they are. I don't know. But yeah. That's pretty neat. It's another flavor of algae eater. All right, only uh, three rows to go here. Almost there. We have two tanks of these. These are Sudamugil Gertrude. These are from the Aru 4 location. And if you look at them, they're a little fancier than your normal aquarium strain Gertrude. They have yellow orange tips on the caudal fin and on the anal fin. So it's it's kind of like a Gertrude that's all dressed up. Looks just a little nicer. So the, the, the Aru 4, 3, 2, uh, those are just locations? Yeah, it's, so there's all these different locations where this species lives. Each one looks a little different. So you kind of want to keep the locations separate if you're going to breed, so you don't muddy the, the uniqueness of what they look like in this river versus this river over here. Perfect. Yeah. Pygmy oh. quarries, just cute as a button. I love pygmy quarries because you can get a lot of them in a tank and quarries want to be in massive groups. So if you don't have a big, big tank, you can still give them a really comfortable home because they're so small that you can fit a lot in a small tank. Some mollies, these are the, um, 
they were, what were they, platinum marble mollies, silver marble mollies, but the ones that have almost all black on them, we call them black marble mollies. We just feel like it's more honest. Well, these are some right. of my favorite here. Alitawa. Yeah. One of the prettiest rainbow fish ever to hit the market. I just thank you, thank you, thank you to Gary Lang, Lang and Johannes Graf and whoever else was on that collection party that brought these in because they're a dwarf species. They top out at about two and a half inches and they're colorful all the time, afternoon, morning, whenever. They don't have to be flared up to be pretty. They, they're even better when they flare up, but even in their normal state, they're just a stunning little fish. Yeah, very nice. All right, these are the Rummy Nose Rasbora. So we have both sexes in here. The males are the ones with the bright rummy noses and the red tips on the fins, and the females just have clear fins. Awesome. All right, orange rice fish. They always look more gold or peach than orange to me, but they're called orange <laughs> rice fish, so. Funny how that works. Yeah, the, <laughs> the industry. These are the Komeng Rivers. I like them because they generally always have some color. They have a nice, even if they aren't firing up red, they have a nice kind of steel blue iridescence on them between, uh, between display parties. These are, there's some shrimp in here. Hopefully I can show them to you. They're another species of Caridina shrimp. Just a few of them. These are the Matano red shrimp from Lake Matano. And just starting with a few, trying to build a colony up. Is she buried? I think she's it buried. looks like it. Beautiful. That's what we want. So these are the Rio Carora plecos, the 401s. A neat zebra type, really strong banding on these. Nice contrast. Oh, wow, yeah. A neat hypencistris. Is that about full size or maybe a little bigger? I think they're gonna get about four inches. But I confess that I don't remember every hypencistris, but generally yeah. three to four inches, maybe Pretty five on a really big species. Yeah, they're not, none of the hypencistris get over five that I'm aware of. 173s, okay, this is one of the rarest plecos in the world. Um, the ocelot might be rarer, I'm not sure. But the true 173, we'll get the shrimp first. Get them all over there. These are the true 173s. So they look a lot like a, a 46, like a zebra mm -hmm. pleco. Um, but I know the provenance on these. So I know the real, they're the real thing. They come from a, a breeder in Norway. Um, they were, my breeder obtained them from him at the uh, L number conference in Hamburg, Germany. Mm. So that's where all the world's pleco true nerds and experts gather. I don't think there's any way at that event someone could have sold fake 173s. Like yeah. People would have called them out. So that's where they came from. And then there's these shrimp here. These are called the, uh, I think they're the Starry Night Shrimp. Another Sulawesi type. These are some CPDs. And we don't have a lot left in this tank. But look at the weight on these guys. Like, just look at those bellies. Yeah, a lot of times with CPDs, every time I see them, they're sunken. It's so emaciated, it's so sad. That's the, this is a big problem with the supply chain of CPDs. These come from the one and only Rick May, though. So these were bred and raised just down in Utah in his fish room. And we only have a few left. We, we buy a few hundred at a time from him, but they sell so fast. Here we've got dwarf anchor cats. Super, here's one over here. Oh, that is not, dwarf. Not an active fish, but like if you like chocolate catfish and that kind of stuff, this is a dwarf species that is kind of like that. So they work in a nano tank. Um, they come out to feed and stuff, but apart from that, they're you know typical. Go wedge themselves in some wood like a pleco and wait. Kind of a really neat mini, little uh, banjo cat. Yeah, that's a better description. A mini banjo cat. Although ironically. Ban oh, look Ooh, at all wow. these. <laughs> Banjo cats come from um, South America, and these come out of Asia. But yeah, just look how fat these are. This just makes yeah, me happy. Some, some pretty big fat ones in there. These are Aspidor spilotus. Um, these were bred and raised by the one and only Rick May. So these are hobbyists bred and raised in the United States. Aspidors are the most underrated quarry type species genus there are. I agree. I, people don't know this fish. They're small, they're so active, they're hardy, and they're the easiest fish to breed whatsoever. That's why I like them. What, why do you like them? 
Oh man, they're well. So I love quarries, and they're basically a more active Corydora. Mm -hmm. They're just all. They're always just zipping around. I mean, as you're watching right now, this is what they do just nonstop all day. They're constantly courting and breeding. We call them the hippie commune because they're always making love. Yeah, um, and it's as simple as just putting in a sponge filter, and they're, they'll spawn their uh, eggs in the in the uplift tube. Mm -hmm. At least for me. Yeah, absolutely. Glow light Danios, if you want an absolutely stunning fish that is not very expensive, is, is hardy and stays small and is active, these guys are hard to beat. They, they glow from across the room. Have you kept these? I, I will not keep these until I have a tank where I can have like 300. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big, big group. Of them. Yeah, they are so beautiful. My they, favorite Danio by far. This, little, was a, this was a surprise yeah, for me. Yeah, a little off-brand for us. Um, so these are the, the dragon butt blood cichlids. And the reason I brought these in is I wanted to try a few fish from Israel. And this is one of the offerings out of Israel. Mm. And so I just wanted to see how they did. And they seem to be doing pretty well. But the nice thing is we've had these for months and months and months. So there's no hormones on these guys. We don't feed hormone foods. And they're getting big enough around three inches or so that they're starting to get their natural well they're a hybrid there's nothing natural about this fish <laughs> but they're they're starting to get their non-hormone colors and you can see you don't you don't need hormones they're they're beautiful just how they are and they're going to get better and better these grow to about you know i don't know five six inches these do and right now they're about half grown back on brand yeah back <laughs> on brand snakeskin blue ivory guppies a breeding group that we've got here very nice. And one of my all-time favorites, these are the Platinum Half Beaks. I have definitely become a sucker for these Half yeah. Beaks. They're, they're amazing. I just like everything about them. Small, nano, and just interesting. Mm -hmm. um, Electric Blue Jack Dempsey's. This is an experiment. We brought in this group from one supplier, another group from a different supplier, just to see who would do the best. These did the best. We have another tank of them that, that really struggled, that took a while to get happier and healthy. Um, and that, that's kind of what we do when we're trying to figure out which fish to get from who. We, we try from a d few different vendors and figure out who does the best job. These, not a single loss, not a single problem. Just absolutely phenomenal. If, if this is a fish you've liked, but you've been hesitant to get them because of the uh, reputation for being frail and inbred and all those problems, uh, I think you could get these. We haven't seen a single problem with this batch. Okay, this is a cool pleco. Um, hey, here's one out here. These are the albino chocolates. We saw the, the wild colored chocolates a little while ago. There's an albino. These are the 270s. And uh, there's a few more in here. Now these are big, they're bulky, they're super healthy. Look at those. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty neat. I'm not, I'm not a big albino guy, but those look pretty good. Yeah. And then there's a shrimp there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'd have to look to see which kind he is, but we have some Sulawesi shrimp in here as well. These are Rhinogobia shui. This is maybe the prettiest Rhinogobius out there. And he's not colored up right now as far as like breeding dress either. This is their normal everyday dress. When they go into breeding dress, that is something else. But check that little guy out. Really, really, wow. really pretty yeah. rhinogobius on the bucket list of a lot of people. And have they been bred in obvious bread yeah, yet? Yeah, you, nice. these are not uh, any more difficult to breed and raise, as far as what I understand, than like your white cheek gobies and stuff. The uh, I think Preston John is breeding these. Mm. I could be wrong. I sorry, Preston, if I'm wrong, but I thought I remembered a video of him breeding some rhinogobius, and I thought this was one of them. Um, I do have another group coming in. All right, so here's, this is one of the rarest plecos. It's a miniature pleco. It's the L174, the ocelot pleco. And the reason it's so rare is it has this tiny little habitat, basically this, this very restricted uh, pool in a river it's very deep, so we're talking like 30 feet deep. And the current is crazy, crazy strong. Wow. So they um, 
are almost impossible to collect. There we go. Here's a bunch on the wood. Oh, okay. So these are almost impossible to collect. So uh, you really can't find them. Um, we found a breeder, though, that was able to get some, and he's been breeding them for a few years now. And we've been getting them from him for a few years now, and they're doing well. These were about three quarters of an inch when we got them in. Wow. Um, in, in the last several months, they've put on quite a lot of size. What's the full size on them? Like two and a half, maybe wow, yeah, three on a really small. big one. Yeah. So those, the 471 mini snowballs, oh, this one's empty. empty. And the, uh, uh, oh, what's the other one? 280 spiny plecos are the smallest, as far as I know. So these are from Orange Cones. Orange Cones bred and raised these and sent us a nice batch of Farwellas. So, you know, Farwellas get, what, seven inches or so? These are maybe two inches right now, but they are hobbyist bred and raised. All right, big, colony of uh, shrimp here. These are the snowball shrimp. The, I think this species is serrata or something like that. These are a domesticated strain. But in here is the other really small fish pleco we have, which is the L471, which is the mini snowball. Ta -da. See them all? They're so small. <laughs> Okay, let's try here. There you go. There it is. It's a neat looking one. Yeah. It's, it's, it looks so similar to a 201, but it's a miniature variety. Are we really down? Wow. I, Time to order some more. Yeah, I mean, we had a ton of those. We do sell a lot of those though. I think we're the, one of the only places where people can get them and know that they're actually getting the thing that they're paying for. There's been a lot of people that have bought 471s and then they grew up and they became 201s. Can we find them? Can we find it? These are zebra hillstream loaches, pseudogastromyzon, or gastromyzon, I can't remember, but zebra is the species, zebrinus. Um, but in here also we have some Bloody Marys, which are one of the rarest hillstream loaches out there and, and they have to be one of the prettiest. Let's see if we can find one. We've only got a couple left. Here's one. Right here. This is a Bloody Mary. It, I don't know if the, the red's coming through on camera. And, but bright red on the dorsal and bright red on the uh, tail fin. And when they're on the back wall, you can see the, the scarlet spots on the back of the fish as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's just a real, oh wow, there. Is it showing up? Got some, uh, saw the red when he was moving. Okay. I wish I had more of them. If I can get them on the back wall, that would be good. There we go. Oh yeah, it really shows now. Get the plant out of the way. Anyway, I stirred it up a bit, folks. Sorry, but hopefully you can see that, that nice red on that guy. Yeah, what a beautiful, what wow. A interesting fish, huh? My first time ever seeing that. Those blew my mind. I was just looking at them, and then I saw some of those, and I was like, holy cow, what's that? And I, I have a loach guy that helps me ID funky stuff, and he was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you wow. got those. So every now and then, something really cool shows up. All right, these are some neat little uh, gobies. They're called <laughs> Lambatangbing, I think, gobies. <laughs> Um, and then you can see the tail here of a 427. We saw the L600 before. This is another form of leopard cactus pleco, the 427. Um, see those spines? Yeah. Are those showing up? Check that guy out. Wow. Some black tiger darios. Okay. Uh, here's one yep. down there. Um, and a couple odds and ends, but. This used to be a big, big group of black tiger darios. We, we were sold down quite a bit. Here's a nice male peeking out from under yeah, the... Yeah, I got one right You here. got there? Yeah. Seen the black and the red? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love these. These are uh, Pentheagelis, I think is how you say it. It's the dwarf, golden dwarf barb. They only get an inch or so, and they are so, so peaceful. And they're not, like, massively quick to the food like a lot of barbs. They're not food aggressive. So you can keep these barbs with a lot of your 
like chili rasboras or other other fish that are easily outcompeted. Yeah, I was gonna say they're more like rasboras. I see some uh, gobi. Oh yeah, hill stream loaches. Are oh, not hill stream loaches. I'm sorry, horse face loaches. A oh, horse face. Yeah. Such a cool fish. Keep the substrate immaculate. Uh, just a unique, unique loach. Peaceful and likes to bury itself with its head poking out, which is just kind of cute. Okay, here's some 201s. So we saw the mini snowball plecos. Oh yeah, I don't even have to no. disturb them. Oops. Every now and then you'll see a sticky like just dissolving in the <laughs> bottom of a tank because I knocked one in and didn't realize it. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the regular snowball pleco that gets, you know, regular hype and sister size. Awesome. And the price point on them is much nicer. Okay, so these are some of my favorite all-time plecos. The Sultans. Yeah. Look at them there. I don't even have to move the wood. You can see their white tips, like, shining, right? And the black polka dots. Yeah. So... Oh, so cool. Let me flip this over. And there's Blue Dream shrimp in here, too. Again, shrimp and plecos, man. Match made in heaven. But check those out. Yeah, such a beautiful pleco. It's a vampire pleco species. They're, they're named that because they have these two teeth that come out kind of like a vampire. And they use those to eat snails. They don't only eat snails but they have the dentition to uh, be very effective against snails. And shrimp, so I'm actually really surprised here. Like, oh, really? a lot of what you read about vampires is like they'll just go after all inverts. Oh no, I, but clearly, we, we've not had a problem. <laughs> clearly, it's one of the, another one of those you read it on the internet things, you know? Let's see here, and this is, so we've had these together since February. Like I think if they were gonna <laughs> decimate the shrimp, they would have had plenty of time to do it. Yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> these are rainbow shiners. These are big enough size that they actually kind of look pretty all year round, even when they're not spawning. Um, the other tank we have, once these sell out, they're only about one inch. And you have to wait for them to get about two inches before they really show much color. But they're worth the wait. They're a really pretty fish. And some luminatus, uh, I think. A few luminatus in there, uh, yeah. Platinum, Romino's Tetras, and these are big boys. So you saw the other tank. These are probably twice that size. And All the right. platinum because of the top. Yeah, see the glow on them? Yeah. That bright, bright iridescence? Yep, that's what makes them platinum. Sweet. All right. Flagfish? Florida flagfish. <laughs> I, uh, people have been asking for these and asking for these, and I keep waiting. I need to make a video where I take a clump of hair algae, and I put a clump in here, a clump with the Amano shrimp, and a clump with the uh, green leaf shrimp to see who's the best algae eater. Mm. So I just haven't had a chance to make that video, but I wanna make that video before I list them as for sale, otherwise I won't be able to make the video. So True. everyone that's waiting, I'm sorry. <laughs> I will try to get to that. The longer they wait, the bigger and fatter they'll be. Yeah. Gold rams, Microgeophagus ramirezi. This is the gold form of what we often call the uh, German blue ram. I'm not sure why they're called that, but Hardy Batch doing fantastic, and we keep ours at 79 degrees. We aren't pushing ours up into the 80s, and, and they're doing good. Perfect. Gold White Clouds, my first recommendation when anyone asks me what should I put in my, my pond or my patio tub or whatever, because mm -hmm. they're hardy, they can take a wide range of temperatures, and because, since they're gold, you'll see them from top down. Yeah, very pretty. Dark Rivers, I love these. I know they don't look like much all the time, but once they really grow full grown and settle in, they have that nice pinstripe and the fins turn red and they typically stay red. They're not one that has to be flashing and be pretty. It just takes them a while before they start showing that. All right, Kohaku Red Wag High Fins. This is a new uh, color strain that I had never seen before of the high fin variety. These came in with, with epistylus. And for anyone that's struggling with epistylus, what we do is we turn off the light and we use ICX and we treat for about seven days, usually within two days or so. If it is epistylus, you'll see a marked improvement. If you don't see that improvement, it's probably something else. Um, these cleared up pretty good. We're just getting them, uh, giving them another couple weeks though. So they're cleared up of epistylus now. All right, some Bolivian rams. These, do they still have their babies? Yesterday there were babies on that fork, but I don't know if the babies survived. Anyway, they spawn for us all the time. And they're on top of some L470, uh, 411s, the Rio, what is it, Rio Monte Pleco, these guys? Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. 
Yeah, those are pretty neat. Yeah, fine spotted, but it's also kind of got that really fine worm pattern on it. Um, yeah, the, kind of one of a kind. You don't see a lot with yeah. that fine of a line on them. Well, I got to admit, I love this fish. Isn't that neat? Yeah, so these oh, are the uh, Hamburg hyphen swordtails. I had never seen these before. This is the first time I've ever been able to get these in. Oh, he's got his dorsal And load. I'm glad I did. Hopefully the sparkles are showing up on camera, but it's it's got the black body, but then we it's glittered with it. like these iridescent tips on the scales. They're like a green blue color. Gosh, I love these. I love this fish. Yep. Wow. All right, these are bred by the one and only Rick May. This is Amatitlana, I think I'm saying it light, right, uh, Nana Lutea, which is, they call it like the gold convict because when it gets into spawning color, it's bright gold with black contrast on it. Is this a dwarf species or? About this, yeah, I would say about three inches maybe, maybe four inches. They don't get okay. real big and they're, uh, they're fairly peaceful too. Now they're Central American cichlid, but for a Central American cichlid, they're very peaceful. There we go. Well, three more rows to go. These, I think everyone knows what these are. These are electric blue rams. And look at the stickies, only 79 degrees. Had them for quite a while, no losses. And, and look at them. I've always kept rams in the upper 70s. Oh, always. really? And you did not have problems? Always. See, this is new to me. I thought they had to be in the mid 80s or at least oh, 82. Oh, man, people would yell at me in my videos when, when I would say it, but just never had any problems. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I, I haven't kept rams for years because I run my system at 79 degrees and I thought they're not gonna do well. But then people have told me like, you're, you didn't tell me, but people have yeah. told me like you're telling me now that they'll be fine. And I was real hesitant, but tried some, did great. Tried more, did great. Tried it, haven't had a problem, so. Yeah. All right, solid yellow hyphen platies. Really nice platy. Yeah, I'd be like, I, I, I gotta get some, I don't know, Sortel's platies, I, I don't know. Never been a sore tail platy person, but man, I'm Until falling you came in love. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what we try to do. <laughs> try to open new horizons for you, Steve Fox. Um, some Pandagara, just a ton of them enjoying all the algae. It's like a little paradise for them. Look at the size of those bellies. And we haven't fed them yet today, but we, I mean, they've got so much algae, they just graze on all day long. Nice. All right, here's some tequila sunrise. They, they got their, there's notes on all these tanks about the state of each fish. These were moved in here to recover from some nipped tails. They're, they were in with a betta, and usually you can put bettas in with guppies without a problem. But this particular betta, since they all have their own personalities, decided to get a little nippy. So they're recovering. And they're in here with some more of the uh, super blue cherry tetras. A fish we're getting famous for is our cardinal tetras. Uh, we do a great job with these. We have good suppliers that treat them right. We know how to make sure they're nice and fat and healthy, and we almost never have a loss. Yeah, no so, losses reported. Yeah, I, and, I mean That's on the customer crazy. end too, and they're thriving long term. We've had lots of customers who want, uh, I want to say Congo, I don't know why, who want cardinal tetras but have had problems in the past repeatedly Me and finally given up. Um, Same with the Romeo. I've given up on Romeo right, too, Romeo but you've got those, those figured out. Yeah. And so we've, we've tried to find those kinds of problem fish that people want and are available, but not available healthy and really dig in and figure them out. And we figure these out. Our customers are having great success with these. So I always tell people, if you've given up on Rumino's, uh, Rumino's tetras, Cardinal tetras, Celestial Pearl Danios, um, oh, yeah, try it one more time and try us. And they're gonna do well for you. And if they don't, I'll refund all your money, including the shipping. There you go. Comeng Rivers. Just an awesome, awesome rainbow fish. Yeah, I really love that orange kind of rustic look on the fins. And uh, in there with some blue ribbon tetras, one of those uh, that's coming out of Brazil, I think the Mato Grosso region. Um, one of those kind of uncommon new tetras. <laughs> All right, a fish out of Disney's Fantasia. These are not cheap. I think they're like 300 bucks a pair. Wow, look how big the tails but are. But these were hard to find, man. These are Veil Tail Albino Pineapple Hyphen Sword Tails. You What's sure that? that's it? Veil Tail <laughs> Albino Pineapple Hyphen Sword Tail. Oh, it's seven words. 84 every, syllables. Every <laughs> word you add brings the price up by 20 bucks, it yeah. seems like, with these things. But look at the fins on those females. Only the females express the veil tail. And they have really high dorsal fins. Yeah. Too. And Obviously. The, those males are the same genetically, but they don't express the veil tail. So um, 
Oh, like I'm not into a lot of highly man-made fish. I, I, okay, I've been telling myself that for decades, but the truth is, I guess I am because there's certain ones that I see and I'm like, well, I don't like artificial fish, but man, I like that. There's just something mesmerizing about that finish. Yeah. So these are the toothpick fish, which is basically the most miniature species of pipe fish you're ever gonna see. Um, they're in here with a whole bunch of plants on top and things, so they're kind of shaded and probably hard to see on camera, but super unique, tiny fish, maybe an inch and a half, two inches like for a monster maybe? I don't know if I've ever seen them that big. Just super unique. What do you feed them? We feed them mostly baby brine shrimp. Yeah. We also usually put scuds in the tank, so as the scuds breed, they pick off the baby scuds. Probably not for your beginner then, huh? Yeah, so I've never got these to eat anything but live food not yeah. even frozen so let's keep that in mind I've never tried frozen baby brine they might eat that but I just have so much brine shrimp why brine shrimp all the time it's just easy okay so these are Phenacogrammus um, Arantiacus from Lafini River so kind of the gold Congo Tetra and I want to tell you a story here so if you look at this you'll see we've had lots of losses in this tank if you look at this you'll see way back when we had one loss in this tank. The reason is we tried a new supplier. African tetras are hard. The supply chain is hard to figure out. So we're trying to find a good supplier of them. We tried a new supplier and they came in, they looked good, but we had gradual issues. We had some issues. So this tank we treated with antibiotics. This tank we treated with antiparasite medication. And that's how we figure out new fish from new suppliers. We continued to have deaths in this tank this tank we did not, so obviously, when we order from mm -hmm. this supplier again, we know what to do. We'll, we'll use those antibiotics. Um, we did eventually switch to antibiotics on these once we were confident of the results of the test, so now everyone's good. But that's the kind of work you have to do if you're really trying to figure out your supply chain and how to get the fish healthy for the customers. And these have always been my favorite. I've got a huge colony of these. Yeah. So these are some Hawaii variatus, but these are like the yellow form. Yeah, I was so, gonna notice there's not a lot of yeah, orange there. We are calling these the uh, yellow tuxedo because okay. we think that's a more accurate description. There, there are some that are getting a little bit of the orange, but this is a more yellow strain. Um, I think they're really pretty still though. Still really cool. Really healthy. All right, there's still yeah. one back there. So Couple this is them. another species of like super rare hill stream. These ones, the ones we looked at earlier come from Burma. These come out of Vietnam. And uh, I can't remember the name of the genus. It starts with a V. It's like Van Herneri or something like that is the genus. Um, Super cool. Awesome fish. The biggest ones we had were three, four inches. That guy's probably at what, two and a half, maybe three. Oh yeah, come, oh, yeah there's a monster back there. Hard oh, yeah. to see him, but... Hang on, the, the net is blocking the light. Does that help at all? We yeah, we can see it now. And they do the same thing. They do the flutter. Um, just a different kind of lizard hill stream, as I like yeah, to call it. Yeah, those are awesome. Some... Uh, Metal. Yeah. These are the... Uh, ah, geez. Metal's what they call them, but <laughs> what they really are is like the turquoise. These are turquoise guppies. Mm. Um, these... We run into curious cases. So these have been great for us, no problems. We started selling them and stuff, and they've been great for quite a while. Yesterday, when we were feeding, we looked at them close, and we noticed a couple that they're fine, but that's just not swimming quite right. Yeah, there's right. a lethargic, pretty lethargic you know? one right here. So um, we took them down. We're not selling them anymore as of, I think, yesterday. And so we just got to figure them out. Um, this is one of the problems I always had when I was bringing guppies is that wobble. Yep. Yep. So we think we know what to do because we've seen this before. Uh, usually Prazi Metro takes care of it. Um, and we also do Levamisol. The puzzler though is these got that earlier on. But there are cases where, depending on the parasite's reproductive cycle, where something can still yeah. sneak through the treatment plan. Sure. So we're going to you know, redose, see if that has an effect, but Couple it's never boring here. here, man. There's always <laughs> something to solve. We have good news though. 
We have a veterinarian that's going to be coming and working yes. with us. She starts this Thursday. I feel She's like I came a our... week too soon. You got shipments coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And... <laughs> it's all right. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm very excited. This is the first anyone's hearing of it here on Bob's channel, but we have a veterinarian in residence that's starting this week. That's going to be super helpful. So um, we're trying to do what it takes to get the fish healthy, and we do everything we can, but having a vet actually here is going to be just amazing. Can't wait. Um, some of the dragon mosaics. Yep. And here's a show. one of the best looking quarries when they're spawning. Yeah. Anyways. One of the best looking quarries later. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Corridor's Pantanalensis. Um, this is a monster. These guys get four inches or so absolutely stunning when they get big they're sexually dimorphic the males get amazing color and pattern on them these however are juveniles they're gonna be a plain brown fish for a little while these are what would you call that inch maybe an inch and a quarter with the About tail an inch and a quarter yeah. yeah and so I don't know when they get their color but I'm betting at about two and a half inches is when they would really start because that's a four inch fish really rare really hard to find unfortunately they're quite expensive they're 60 70 bucks i do think you have the best price out there though yeah it's not a I've bad seen. price yeah. and more than that these are healthy like they've they've been taken care of they've we've had you know medical experts let's say is that what we're going to call vets these days we've we've had people look at them um so i don't think you're going to be wasting your money yeah i mean prior to this year those were almost impossible to get absolutely and they're aquarium bred which is most of them are wild caught, which, you know, that's fine, but also that supply chain has its problems. Um, well, I didn't clean the glass. Maybe we should just skip these, but these are blueberry OB peacocks. Yeah, we've all seen OB peacocks. <laughs> all right, these are Corydoras Aeneas. These are the true Aeneas. Not that that's like a major height point or anything, but these come out of Trinidad, which is the location of the true Aeneas. Most of the quarries we call Aeneas are like Aeneas is this big, complicated complex of quarries, and uh, there's a lot of species in it, and there's a lot of like undescribed species, a lot of work to do. But so true Aeneas isn't like a big selling point or anything, but that's still, what they are. Still cool to have. It's still cool to know that, I guess. Okay, L46s. They're probably under that other piece of wood since I chose yeah. this one. <laughs> that's just how it works. I can already see them under there. All right, check these out. Boom. Yeah, they're so pretty. And uh, if you saw them on the glass, you're going to see nice full bellies. Um, they've doubled in size once we, since we've had them, so I know they're good. Yeah, it's such a beautiful, I mean, one of the best looking fish in the hobby, regardless yeah. of Pleco or not. I would say this is the fish that started it all with Plecos. Like, this is the fish that came in that everyone was like, woo, and then mm -hmm. the Hype and Sisters boom started. People started noticing them and Plecos really made their name in the hobby, I think, based on this fish. Well, and you can Such see why. One. I'll never forget the first time I learned that they were a carnivore. That blew my mind. I'd always thought of Plecos as like, you know, an algae eater. Yeah. But there's this whole group of Plecos that are carnivores. Who knew? <laughs> Not me in the 90s. Okay, Napoensis. We I saw, love these guys. We saw the big Napoensis, at least that's what I think they are. The identification on the Elegance Complex is hard, people. But these ones were raised, uh, bred and raised by a hobbyist. Um, I'm pretty darn certain these are Napoensis, just because I trust the source to know their fish. Um, these are smaller because they're aquarium bred and raised, but they are aquarium bred and raised. They haven't been through that meat grinder of a supply chain. Uh, that the wilds go through. So, uh, in my opinion, this is the most humane way to source fish, buy them from hobbyists. And a smaller species, so under two inches. Oh yeah, these guys don't get massive, yep. And they're doing fantastic. Yeah, they look No great. losses, no problems. Really unique, awesome quarry. Highly recommend them. Snow white plecos. Um, basically a bushy nose that's pure white. There they are. Yeah, hard to miss. Yeah, hard to miss and uh, still a new enough morph that like the price point on these is, is crazy high, but they're interesting. So Madagascar rainbows, we're treating these for ick right now, but uh, I can show them to you. There they are. I'm actually pretty excited to see these. I think they're 
Very underrated. Yeah, these are one of the most underrated rainbows for sure. And they're, they're doing much better. Like I don't see any X spots or anything anymore. And the body weight's good, everything looks fine. They're just at the tail end of their treatment. So hopefully in another two weeks we can list them. But yeah, once they get big and they get that bright red mm -hmm. colors on the fins and the spangles all over the body. Once upon a time, like 10 years ago, I had a huge group of these in a 125 and it was oh, so cool. How big did they get on you? Like oh, five they were inches? like six inches. Oh, yeah. They were monsters. But yeah. there's a couple different species, so who knows, like... Yeah. So I, I had lunch with Dr. Paul Loisel. Let me try that again. I had lunch with uh, Dr. Paul Loisel at the Triple Crown event. Uh, ACA, ALA, AKA, rainbows, all that. And uh, he's a specialist in Madagascar fish. Oh. And so I was picking his brain about him. And I don't think we know exactly which one we have in the aquarium industry, which yeah. one we have available in the hobby. But there's lots of different ones. They're each unique. Uh, they each come from their own kind of river system. But uh, yeah, who knows? Awesome. Either way. Either way, they're cool. All right. Chilothrina fasciatus, along with, look at these African moon tetras. Like, oh, there's some good color on those. It's just an interesting fish. Another fish which is totally awesome, but the people don't know enough about to know they should buy it. But when you see <laughs> them in person, you walk out the door with them. They're really unique. Random red guppy. This is one we've had for a while as we were trying to figure out the supply chain. So these were hardy and stuff, but the quality you can see, and it's reflected in the price. These are cheaper fish. Still look great though. But they're pretty fish for sure. I mean, but, issues with the fins, but still, I mean, mm -hmm. they're great. Yeah, they're pretty. Now this is All a right. rare one. Giant spotted emperor tetras. Um, I forget the scientific name, it starts with a K. Super unique fish. In are the dots opinion, red? The dots above the dorsal. Oh, wow. The, the dots above the lateral line are red and the dots below it are brown. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. And then on some of them, the dots are just brown or, you know, not red. I don't know if it's brown or black or what. They're dark colored uh, across the whole fish. So I don't know if that's a male-female difference where the males have, get red on oh, top yeah, or like not. They have red lips too. Mm -hmm. But this is a neat fish. These are big. These are going to get about three inches, maybe a little bigger. But uh, in my experience, they're awesome. Yeah, the more I look at it, the more cool things you see, like their yeah. teeth. You see their teeth are... Oh, yeah, they got, yeah. They, they've got chompers. But sure. they're not aggressive, right? I had like, them in with Bolivian rams, and they didn't bother with Bolivian rams at all. They didn't nip their fins or anything. They did outcompete them for food, so I had to move the Bolivian rams, so I wouldn't keep them with anything that slow you know, is a yeah. slow eater. Yeah. They're kind of shy. But rams are one of the slowest eaters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so these are what uh, rainbow shiners look like when they're small. You can see the difference, right? Not colored up or anything yet, but they will. Got to be patient with this fish. They'll get there. The one fish that grows slower than rainbows in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Ember tetra is just a beautiful small nano tetra. That's a really good color too. I know. You, that's why they're called ember because they should glow like an ember, right? Like yeah, a lot cool. of times I see these and there's like a dull orange, yep. almost like a transparent orange. I'm just like, ugh, these look great. Yep. They fully settled in and they're comfortable. Nice. All right, pure platinum albinos. Really, really pretty guppy. Had a little tricky start, but we figured these out. I think that they'll be ready to go in another week or so. Nice. Yeah, those really stand out. One of my favorite garamis that no one else likes, the Moonlight <laughs> Garami. It's not colorful, it's not ostentatious, but when I look at it, I just feel peaceful. Um, I think they're a nice counterpoint in an aquarium that maybe does have voice, you know, ostentatiously colored fish in it. But I just think they're, they're just something peaceful about that fish. And I think in a planted tank, they're just awesome. But yeah, it's very subtle, the, the blue, very subtle. Yeah, it's, it's, I get it. They're not like bright red or orange or anything like that. But to me, I think they're awesome. No one agrees. No and one, some no one uh, buys mystery them. Tetras? <laughs> yeah, so we often get when we order fish, sometimes we'll get a bag of fish and we don't know what it is. Or in the case of this, we'll have a whole bunch of contaminants that come in with the fish we did order. And mm. we'll separate them out and be like, if anyone wants some unique Tetra that no one knows what it is, here it is. <laughs> All right, these I like. These are the Yellow King Cobra Tigers. I think yeah, I got that Yeah, these look right. really good. Yeah. Just, I love that bold black pattern on them. Yeah. Wow. Corridor Centrionalis. Oh, I do love these ones. I like these too. They call them the like green long nose Cory. 
Not listed for sale yet because we've had some issues and we're still trying to figure these out, but once we do, they're just a neat lineage one, I believe. Neat lineage one quarry. There, there aren't a lot of lineage one quarries. Lineage, that is such a hard word to say. <laughs> lineage one quarries available, but this is one that you can occasionally find. Okay, these are the long fin paleotis. So, Corydoras paleotis is one of the hardiest, easiest quarries ever. It's been around forever. Um, it's been known and loved in the hobby by, you know, generations. This is the long fin variety. See that tall dorsal fin coming off yeah, these guys? Yeah, this guy swimming has yeah. really insanely long fins. Yeah. Some of them have long ventrals, long anal. Some just have the long dorsal. But there's a long fin piece to all of them. Speaking of long fin quarries, look at the quality of these. These are long fin Aeneas. Check that out. Yeah, those are great. That is amazing. Like, they have nice, consistent fins and uh, full bellies. This is a good strain. Yeah, those look really good. Albino full red guppies. Awesome. I'll let the fish talk, talk for themselves. I mean, those things are nice and consistent and beautiful. Yeah, really nice fins on those. Scud culture. All right. And <laughs> <laughs> on. Congo tetras. The only tetra species from Africa that is widely available. There's like hundreds, and this is like the one we get, you know? Yeah. That's why I'm working so hard to get some of those other species in. All right, nice tank. These are the Goldie Rivers on the rainbow fish, and then below them is a fish that I think is amazing. This is Nanochromus parillus. This is a, a, a West African peaceful dwarf cichlid from the rivers around the Congo. I think they're really unique. I like the red on the bottom of the tail. I like the striations and the fins. I think this is one of the most underrated, like peaceful dwarf cichlids there is. And they have so much personality. They're, I would, I mean, if you're looking for a small cichlid, I would highly recommend these. Yeah, they're playful. Playful. And I like that iridescent blue patch, like on the front portion of the body. Anyway, it's another fish that I think just people don't know about. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty cool rare, so, yeah. Look at her. She's going to breed her tubes down. Her yeah. belly's red. She's ready. Yeah. This is my favorite rainbow fish ever. The reason I love Melanotania soloensis Skull Creek is because it's, it's one of a kind. It's got that nice pinstripe, and it's super hard to see on camera, especially as they're, yeah. like, swimming and, you know, a little freaked out because I just put another light on them, but they have yellow on the unpaired fins and right against it is a black margin and it really pops when they're not doing this. But this is my favorite all-time rainbow fish. They don't get big. This is a dwarf species. I've never seen them over about two and a half inches. Maybe they get three, I don't know. But Yeah, I love them. One I know of my favorites. I know they're not doing great on camera, but um, what do you like about them? The color like it's so unique huh? it's it's um, I, I love the yellow and black it's so cool yeah uh take our word for it you're not gonna see it yeah <laughs> when they're back there and then the sailfin um kerosene sailfin tetra there you go oh wow those are way bigger really, than last year really unique tetra yeah yeah i think those are fantastic it's like they're ready to spawn too yeah i think those are a cave spawner which is kind of different for tetra Anacara Anomala, bred and raised by the one and only Rick May. I think they call these the golden eye dwarf tetra. Yep, Just golden. a peaceful, small... The, bi well, uh, the bane of my existence. I have failed every time. All right, well, I bet you anything these would live for you. Oh, I've had the worst luck. Well, the worst fish for me is panda quarries, but second uh -huh. are these. <laughs> I love a, them, though. Is there a story there? It's just one of those fish that no matter what I do, they just slowly die off it's over a couple months. It's my clown killie. Yeah. I can't keep clown killies alive. Yeah. All right. Costa tetras. The black line tetra. These, well, these are hard to show you. Cause In my opinion, switched. one of the best schooling tetras. Yeah, absolutely. A tight schooler. Underappreciated, I think, because they don't have bright color, but they have distinct patterns. Like a big school of these with that, that black line especially in a planted tank, the way they're kind of tight together. Really nice fish. And yeah, mine do this all day long. Mm -hmm. I've got 40 of them in a 40 breeder, and that's all they do, just around the plants, up and down, yeah. everywhere. Nice and tight. Yeah, I've seen your videos of them. 
And so then cool. there's some baby uh, Wallace Creeks, uh, Melanotini and Melandi in there as well. Albino cribs. Albino cribs. Oh, what it's, else have we got in here? Um, this Ooh. is Splash Tetris. Yeah. Yeah. So I've bred Splash Tetris. I didn't ever mean to. I never tried. They just bred on the top of the lid. Um, <laughs> That's funny. Jump out of the water, lay their eggs, and splash them to keep them wet. They're a really unique fish. Checkerboard cichlids have not been able to figure these Whoa, out. Yeah, that's yeah a lot. this is one of my biggest failures. I do not know what else to do. The vets on board can't figure them out. Like, I don't know. I have a lot. Of, I know a lot of people that struggle with them. Oh, more of these guys. This. I yeah, love but them so look much. at it. Look at these. These are the albino yeah. red-eyed red hyphen cauliflower swordtails, and. These are the exact ones for sale right now. I think they're uh, $175 a pair, which I know is super expensive, but they're just an expensive fish. But wow. look at them. Like, oh, that guy's flaring. He was. He was raising his fin and dancing. Yeah, there he is. Oh, That's man. an unbelievable fish. And they're, they're healthy, and as far as I know, they, they are breeding as well. So I think they're going to be fine. All right, panda quarries, but... Ugh. But Bob's favorite, <laughs> the veil tails. I love the, I love them so much. I just, I can never keep them alive. Look at the tails on those. Like, I, I'm generally not big on that kind of thing, but I think they look cool. And there are definitely customers who like that. Oh I, yeah. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. No, it doesn't hinder the, their ability to exactly. do anything. Exactly. They can still be. A Sometimes you'll see like the bettas or the guppies with just insane where they're struggling to swim, yeah. but yeah. Or the, Not the parrots here. who can't even use their mouths. <laughs> yeah. I think you'll like this. This is Weitzman eye. Oh yeah. Cory yeah, Norris yeah. Weitzman eye, the two saddle Cory. Probably the zippiest quarry out there besides Aspidorus. I've been after these for a while. Super active. Um, I've seen pictures of their habitat and they come from these like high mountain streams that kind of have good flow, mm. which is similar to the Aspidorus habitat. So it doesn't yeah. surprise me at all that they're kind of like a super active quarry. These were bred and raised by Rick May. So they're hobbyist aquarium bred right down in Utah. So good saurus, good fish. We haven't lost one. And for a long time, this fish was a, a ghost. It was a phantom. It was one that could not be found. They finally found them, and it turns out they're super hardy and they're very easy to breed. So in the last few years, they've actually become Yeah, they've come down available. a lot in price. South American bumblebee catfish. Are you ready for an explosion of activity? <laughs> Boom. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. What we should have done is feed them. Then they come out and they attack it like a big bait ball. But <laughs> and super pretty small. They don't get too big. Do they, bur do they burrow? Um, you know, I've never uh, had them in anything deep in enough to know yeah. that. Uh, they definitely like to hide, but they come out in droves for the food. This isn't a fish that you'll never see. You'll see it at feeding time every time. Just look at wow. that. Yeah. And that's what they do. Like if I put in a big pellet, there's just this horde of them around it <laughs> and they lift it up. There's so many of them and it's just fun. Black phantom tetras along with some uh, aquarium bred and raised uh, here in the United States yellow rainbows. That's the uh, Melanotania Herbert Axelrada, if I remember. Yeah, that's the right yep. one. And Some of them are starting to get their colors. Yeah, yeah, a couple are starting to color in. One of my favorites. Okay, these are black lancer catfish. This is one of the most unique catfish out there. Basically, they seem to have filled the niche that like mamirids and black ghost knife and stuff would fill in other habitats. If you look at the mouth, it looks a lot like the mouth on a myrid or like a black ghost knife. Um, kind of this small, fleshy port. And uh, check these out. I, I love the white stripes on them. Yeah. yeah. They are such a unique, interesting fish. This is one that does come out at feeding time as well. They're shy during the day, they're nocturnal, but give them some food, they'll be out. Yeah, those are just really cool. Cup of catfish right there. <laughs> Look at that. We've raised these up from about an inch. They're this kind of like Cynodonus too. In a way, yeah. But, but the mouth is so different. It's this tiny little like fleshy protrusion. So I think they're probably specialized to dig in the malmony mm. like little worms and stuff. That's what it looks like to me. 
Yeah, super cool. I uh, love these guys. All right, YouTube, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me out here. Any, Glad to any have uh, you, man. words of wisdom? Just I hope that wasn't as long for you guys as it was for us. We're tired. Yeah, it was it was a <laughs> long couple days. No, super fun though. Hope you saw something you liked. If you did, we're here at dancefish.com. We're here to help. And I'll be posting a discount code down below. And uh, I think it's 5% off. 5% off? Yeah, use it. See you next time. <laughs>